This weekend, the Blancpain GT Series Sprint Cup comes to the Hungara Ring just outside Budapest for two more fantastic races in this all-action GT3 Series. Last time out, we were at Masano, where, as the second race got underway, Christopher Meese was on his toes, pitching for the race lead, and it was the Mercedes of Rafael Marchiello that just fended him off on the run down to the first corner. The number 19, Lamborghini, ran wide, had a puncture, and worse was to come for Aaron Taylor-Smith, a Bentley in the wall. On track, the Audis ran nose to tail, one or two cars, though, running wide over the kerb and causing a little bit of damage. One such car was the number 63 Lamborghini, Mirko Bortolotti with a punctured tyre, and that brought him into the pit lane. Worst was to come for the Lexus squad from Emil Frey Racing. But then as the leader, Raffaele Marciello, ran over the kerb, he did damage to the front left corner of the car. He lost the lead, he lost time, and he actually stayed out for a long while within that stint before pitting for Michael Meadows. The understeer was to be his downfall as the number one Audi took over the lead and blasted back into the race. Christopher Meese handing over to Alex Riveras. Eventually in came the much yellow Mercedes. More battles raged on on track. Nico Jama making progress to the delight of co-driver Denis Bulatov. From Emil Frey Racing Stable, Lexus versus Jaguar side by side squabbling with the Mercedes as it tried to get itself back into contention. There was contact between the two, and the Mercedes got mugged as well. Then Nico Bastian lost control of the Mercedes, had a big, big spin, thankfully not involving anybody else. But co-driver Jack Manchester was far from amused, as Christopher Meese and Alex Riveras made it two out of two at Masano with another great win for the Audi run by Team WRT. Jerry Tassin and Vincent Voss on the pit wall, absolutely delighted. Alex Riveras and Christopher Meese, double winners at Masano. After Misano, the Audi could well be the car to beat. Christopher Meese and Alex Riveras come here as championship leaders. Alex Riveras, a winner in sprint and a winner in endurance this year, is eager for two more good results here in Hungary to increase that championship lead. Rafael is, is getting quite close to us uh, in the championship, both in the, in the overall and the sprint, so that's our main competition right now. But we are confident uh, in our team, you know, WRT is doing such a good job. Um, Audi has always been quick also in, in Budapest here, so I believe that we have a good chance to, to stay in the lead and uh, pr try to increase the gap to, to Raffaele. But we will make sure he eats plenty of, plenty of pasta tonight. We've seen the Lexus win in the Endurance Cup. The team is after success in the Sprint Cup. And this could be the ideal circuit for the car with all that grunt and go, especially with the Spaniard Albert Costa behind the wheel. It's the first time for, for us this year that we come in a sprint race. I mean, for our car in the 14 car, that Christian and I, we know the track. So this is a, an advantage, let's say. This is a normal weekend. We, we, we had Zolder, we had uh, Brahatz and uh, Misano as a new track for us, so we learned at the same time that we were setting the car, so it's not easy, both drivers in the same car, and they had a little advantage you know, in our, our neighbors, but uh, finally we, we started in the same, uh, in the same uh, level, let's say, we, we, we improved a lot the car, so I'm quite positive for this weekend. Don't ignore the battles going on in Pro-Am, where the Audi Sport Slovakia entry is going to be a car to watch. We don't see too much of it in the championship, but this weekend, Christian Malcherek is behind the wheel. It's, it's really great. Uh, we are looking forward to every weekend. It's our second weekend right now. We hope to, to have a better result like last time. And we want to develop the car and enjoy the weekend. More opposition in Pro-Am comes from the spectacularly liveried and driven Ferrari 488. And this car, which is a potential class winner, has Carlo Van Dam and Pitti Biron Bafti behind the wheel. This track was very good and we are excited to do the qualify and race. And I think we should get a better result compared to the Rathless. This is my second year conservative and I think this is the best race and the environment, the car and the manufacturing, everything is so good. And at this time of the year, you get the sun and not too hot, it's perfect.
A punctured tyre at Masano has not helped the championship hopes of Lamborghini number 63. It needs two good finishes, two good points hauls here this weekend. Christian Engelhardt knows that very well. I hope this weekend is going to be a step up from the last weekend because uh, we really had some tough luck in the last races, especially Misano where we could have scored a double podium last weekend and could have really been in the game for the championship again. Uh, we had a puncture and then lost all the points, so now we're quite far behind. The leader is quite far away, but we're not giving up. Uh, we know it, things can turn around quickly in this championship. I think this year is generally different from last year because we have uh, new tires and they behave a little bit differently. I know this track very well from the past and uh, always been really successful here, so I, I hope to catch the momentum and uh, Hope we start with a solid base into the weekend and uh, work from there. And uh, I have to really think we can have a good, good weekend this time. And another car to factor in as far as the championship situation is concerned is this Mercedes AMG GT3. Michael Meadows and Rafael Marchiello share the driving duties. Both of them very quick, Marchiello especially. Yeah, for the championship it's, it's quite tough for the sprint uh, because in front Chris and Alex they are doing pretty well and consistent. But we have a good car and we can do important points for the sprint and for the overall. In the pistol we know how this quicker but uh, we are quite close to them. Actually for the sprint it's, it's not so easy because they, like out in front they have some margin loss but to score good points for the overall and then we can see in Barcelona for the endurance. But yeah, I mean, it's it's pretty close sprint, so we have to take care of details and then we'll see where we are. New this year has been the introduction of the Silver Cup. It's given us some great racing and also allowed us to see some new talents emerge in GT racing, such as the men behind the wheel of the number 90 Mercedes. Nico Bastia, we know he's good from his previous exploits in GT cars. He's been joined this year by Jack Manchester. We've been consistent in every race weekend. I don't see why we can't carry that form through to this round. This round. I, mean, just, I mean, with our lead, I think the best thing to do is just you know, just not worry about, I guess, championships, just take it race by race and just try to be as consistent as we've been throughout the season and just take it as it comes. I mean, it's amazing, incredible to race against some of these guys. It's such a big championship, the biggest GT championship in the world. I'm so lucky to drive here and experience it all. I love every minute of it. Welcome along, everybody, to a wet Hungara ring. Now, John Watson, it looks better than it has for a while. There's quite a lot of water on the track. There's a bit of spray, but the forecast for the afternoon is not good. It's changeable right now. I mean, we can see patches of blue sky. It's going to be interesting to see how treacherous the first couple of laps are. That's the danger for everybody, because as the road starts to dry, then they can push on. Nico Vastnia wants to be in the lead, he wants track position, but he's going to be the pioneer on every corner of the first few laps, isn't he? He's the first one to discover where the grip is and how much of that grip there is. The big advantage he will have, though, is he'll have perfect vision, yep. because he'll not be getting any of the spray coming from those cars that he would otherwise be following. So while he is the pathfinder in one respect, and he can control to a degree as well the pace of the field in the opening lap, but he will have clear vision, and that is worth an awful lot, particularly when you've got a field of cars all bunched together to make their way around the opening laps. So the grid scrolls through, the formation lap is underway. The sun is back out, the road is getting dry, the temperature is going up. Uh, Nico Bastien half in jest saying it feels like Malaysia, but I know what he means because it is getting ever more humid. The temperature yesterday uh, was stiflingly hot and uh, it's heading that way despite the fact the road is wet. And the fans, and there are quite a few of them for a Saturday, are in the grandstands looking forward to a great spectacle from these GT cars as they thread their way now through the chicane, coming out of turn six and seven, short straights, then the uh, left-hander of eight, you go right at nine. You're constantly changing direction here, aren't you? It's corner after corner after corner. So, is Nico Bastian going to be able to fend them off on the run to the first corner? We're about to find out who the really brave drivers are in the wet. Look at the way the road is drying. The Mercedes, which have been the fastest cars across free practice and qualifying are at the front of the grid. One hour of racing and the Hungara ring is go. And a really good start there by Engelhardt who dives out from the third row. He's got the lead on the way down towards the first corner. 
that was either an exemplary start or an anticipatory one, but either way, the Lamborghini has the advantage. Nico Jama is on the outside line, and he goes deep into the corner. Michael Meadows tries to gain ground on the inside. So far, so good. They've all made it through, but Engelhardt away like a robber's dog. That was a great start. A very good start by everybody. They control themselves, but certainly Christian Engelhardt got a real flyer as he went down the outside against the pit way of Pitbull. But look, there is the problem into turn two. You've no grip, and there's a falling. This corner falls away from you all the way around it, and then you've got to try and get out of the throttle to make sure. Over the curb and looking just ahead, they was at Nicolas Jama and the Mercedes. Four wheels well and truly off the racetrack. And there, Nico Bastian tries to go around the outside of it. They both go off the road, so does Meadows. They're all off, they can't have the grip. There's also the inviting extra runoff there as Jaman goes deep into turn five. Nico Bastian will go second. Andrew Watson's got wide of the BMW in the background. Jaman on the outside is still braving it out with Bastian. Who goes through on the inside? They touch Michael Meadows, tries to get in on the act as well. Look, there are Mercedes everywhere, and Jaman goes ahead again of Nico Bastian. You wouldn't imagine these are all drivers on slick tires on a damp racetrack fighting like mad on the opening lap of race. But Andrew Watson pushing the back of the 88 Mercedes. Is he on wax? Because those tires look are giving him far better traction on this opening lap. He started 11th on the grid and he's up into the top four. I reckon he's on wax. I think you're absolutely spot on. The reason why that car is going so quickly right now is because he's got shed those more grip from the tire than those that are around him yeah. up now squeezing past Nico Bastia in the 90 Mercedes currently, well that was on pole position now, it's in second place and may well be down into third place, but how much longer will Andrew Watson be able to maintain this pace because as the track dries, then he will have those wet weather tyres beginning to deteriorate. We still assume that the performance and the pace that he's had, you've got to think he's on a set of wet weathers. What about Engelhardt? Because it was such a good getaway and look at the first lap that he's done, he is 4.4 seconds clear. He's not tipped oh. to ground and there's an Audi getting it way, way wrong coming out of the last corner. That was one of the Attempto cars. There's Andrew Watson going for third. Look on the inside line, he goes through. But Engelhardt, if he is on slicks, has done an outstanding first lap, hasn't he? There, deep into the first corner goes Simon Gachet. He survives it, but I, I query Engelhardt's tyres as well, given how well he's got on that one. I mean, he certainly had bite off the start line. Although it's yeah. a rolling start, but when you drop the throttle, with the amount of horsepower and torque that these engines have got, you can spin up your rear wheels very, in spite of traction control as well, spin up the rear wheels. And Engelhardt got massive grip and bite off that start to thrust himself into the lead, 4.4 seconds at the end of one lap. Andrew Watson in fourth place, fastest first sector time of all. Again, we believe on the set of wet weather time. So there, coming up towards turn five, Nico Bastian has gone a little bit wide. Michael Meadows tries to get in on the act as well, but it's Engelhardt ahead of Andrew Watson, who is going very, very impressively indeed. Both of those lapping in the low 42s, suggesting the Lamborghini might well be on wax as well. So if that is the case, push early on, build a gap that you can then preserve to the end of the 25 minutes, but it's a gamble. It's a big gamble indeed, and if, you know, the, the track is on the racing line getting clearer. There's the problem on the outside of turn seven. You can see is there six Mercedes struggles, or 35 Mercedes struggles for traction, and now a bug get you say, mugged by the Audi, and there's not an awful lot you can do around here. So we understand that Christian Engelhardt is oh, on big, slicks. Big, big off. off there. That's again the attempt to 66, 66, isn't it? So that is Stein's hot horse going off the road and back on again. There's a car very definitely on slick tyres. Uh, so Engelhardt on slicks doing a masterful job up front, getting away. The benefit of getting the lead into turn one and then being able to drive at his own pace with that confidence and not worried about somebody trying to dive bomb you into turn two. And he's just pulling away the gap. Well, the gap actually now is reduced because it's yeah. Andrew Watson in this car, the BMW, who's closed down that lead was initially 4.4 seconds. Now it's only 3.7 seconds. So Andrew Watson and BMW are absolutely mullering track conditions. But for how long can he contain that pace? He's got another 25, uh, another 20 minutes, hasn't he, before the pit window opens. So sooner or later, the tyres are going to drop off the edge of a cliff as there Stuart Leonard tries to have a go on the inside line against Norbert Seedler as they come into turn one. Stuart Leonard, who will give way to Robin Fritz, tiptoes up the inside line, tries to get the power down, but it is there the Lexus that fends him off for the moment. So Andrew Watson has done the fastest lap of the race. We've only had, in fairness, two laps, one proper flying lap. There, Peter Scotthorse goes wide and almost takes 26 Audi of uh, Neil Stephen up with him. You just can't slow down. There's just not enough traction on the front wheels, the, even the rear wheels, to slow you down again. And here we see the start again. But watch the Lamborghini there. Pops out from behind. 
in the third row of the grid just has traction, just has got speed and just can carry it all the way down. And no one, if look, they're all looking to the left, wondering who's coming down the outside of the track where it's going to be drier. No one thought to look down the inside of the track where it's still probably at its wettest. Now look, Andrew Watson is dropping back. He's lost out to Nico Jamin, who is up into second. Here comes Bastien, here comes Meadows, the third and fourth. And Andrew Watson makes the BMW as wide as possible. He's got to go to the wet part of the road as well to keep the tyres cool. But he's on borrowed time now, is he not? Because look, he's lost one place and he's got the rest of them crawling all over him. Meadows is ahead of Bastiat and it won't be long surely before he's ahead of the BMW. You're riding with Meadows now. Well, there's two against one, so Andrew Watson, whichever way he looks, he's going to be challenged by the two following Mercedes. Michael Meadows on the inside, Andrew Watson looking for the wide line, followed by Nico Bastia, who's trying to go the long way around the outside of Michael Meadows, and I think he's just about done it and succeeded. So Michael Meadows loses a place to Nico Bastian, delay behind the BMW, Michael goes wide, he's back on the road, the Mercedes coming under attack now though, from number one, because Alex Riveras goes through in the Audi, the car that leads the championship, the Sprint Cup championship goes through, fastest man on the circuit, Norbert Siedler at the moment, down in 16th place, there is the order, the top 20 as they come out of turn five. Round the outside goes Bastien, and the inside goes Meadows, but everywhere they want to be, there's this BMW in the way. Three wide, look, at the inside, Bastien. Round the outside goes Michael Meadows. Brilliant move, he's got back ahead of number one, Audi. So up into third now is Nico Bastien. Fourth is Meadows, and fifth is almost everybody else. Andrew Watson is just ahead as they come over the timing line, but behind him, Dries Van Thor is up into sixth, down to seventh has gone Riveras. He's on the inside line, look at the two Audis side by side. Round the outside there goes the white Audi of Simon Gachet. He's got past one, he's got past two, he's got past three. Has he on the outside? Not quite, Andrew Watson doesn't give him much room. And look, Riveras has dropped back now behind Christian Kleen. So Riveras is now down to ninth. I mean, it's, it's just, you, you, you make your decisions and you pull into your car, but you think you can make room. Dries Van Thor dives off the inside of Christopher Hassa, and he tries to get that position, make it stick. You've got the Lexus directly behind. You've got on board with Alex Riveras. And you, when you've got so many cars all jockeying for one bit of the racetrack, you make your move and you can get it right. You can be wrong-footed and think, Unfortunately for Alex Ramirez, he got wrong foot at the, at the wrong time. Is there, Andrew Watson goes wide and loses that now to Dries Van Thor for fifth place. After he got pole position, Nico Bastian said very important that because he just can't overtake round here. And in contrast, as Watson goes wide, thanks to the rain and different tyre choices, we are having a brilliant battle up front. Brilliant for us, brilliant for the viewers, not great for those that are following <laughs> Andrew Watson. Because they know that they're being the, you know, their pace, their performance is being injured by that of the BMW on a set of tyres that is not probably way, way past its best. And in these track conditions, it's only going to deteriorate even further. There is Bass Linders looking on in the uh, pit garages. Andrew Watson's now also being given a driving standards flag for disrespecting track limits at Turn 4. That's the least of his problems. He's just trying to keep the car on the road with a set of tyres that are now not fit for the conditions. He's lost another place there, looking because round the outside of him uh, goes the charging Simon Gachet. And he's going to lose out also here because Norman, uh, sorry, Christian Clean is up behind him. Look round the outside, Andrew Watson fighting the car. Through goes Clean and also Riveras oh, comes through and he's no. sideways and he's off the championship leader spins, he's in the wall. Riveras loses it coming out of the last corner. Yeah, was, I don't know if there was contact or not between the BMW and the Audi, but the Audi was on the outside of the track, caught the wet track, you know, the, uh, the, the curbing on the exit of turn 14, and once that rotation began, there was nothing Riveras was going to be able to do about it. Number one gets going, but it's got damaged rear suspension. Look, you can see oh, yeah. left rear corner is broken, so Alex Riveras will limp to the pit lane. Well, the track's gone green again, so we're back at the races. There he is, and he's about to lose out because that's Hubert Hart getting up the inside of him. Also through there, look, is Norman Seedler, and also darting through Loris Hesemann, Andrew Watson. The danger is that he perseveres to the window opening and he loses a lap because the car's going to lose so much pace against those on slick tyres now. Right here is the incident. So have a look. The Audi comes on the outside of the BMW, drifts wide. Well, there was contact, but the Audi was also, the left rear was on the the curbing and it was beginning to, to me, it was beginning even just to whether the contact was the cause of the car ultimately ending up against the wall or whether it was the Audi trying to come back off. You know, the BMW was there, it ain't going to disappear. Look at the 82 coming right there. We go, and that was just almost inevitable. You could see it was at the beginning of a spin for Hazelman, and uh, he fulfilled the prophecy. So we're almost at the pit window opening as there. Mirko Bortolotti gets ready to take over the leading car. The fact that he's ready now suggests that they're going to bring that in at the start of the window. Oh, there goes a hook, 
That's Harbour. That's yeah. the pro am leader losing it at the last corner. Meadows. In comes Michael Meadows to give way to Raffaele Marchiello. Another fastest lap of the race to Jama. A 45-4. He's taken another half a second out of Engelhardt. And Driesman 4 up into fourth place as well. He's also taken the place away from Michael Meadows. So that's Michael Meadows down to fifth. Raffaele Marcello will be taking that car over very shortly indeed as Meadows. Well, that was the reason why Meadows came into the pits. So that's where the position yeah. has been lost. And they're also in 55, which is uh, Peter's Crockhorst for a tempo. So the pit lane getting a bit busier. Michael Meadows' work done. Can Raffaele Marcello get a win out of this race? The car heads down the pit lane. 63. This is the leading car, Christian Engelhart. So he's on that 15. Is he in this time? Yes, yes he is. So the Grasser Racing team, the car that has led this race since the lights went out. The gap between first and second there is now the race leader, Nicola Jama, was 3.4 seconds when they came across the line at the end of that 14. That's academic now because the are now in the pit lane and wait to see what Grasser Racing can do get that car turned around. Also be careful in the pit lane, if it is still wet in the pit lane, that's another area where drivers traditionally are getting caught on. So Marco Bortolotti will take over, Nico Jamma has done another fastest lap of the race, a 145.383. So now it is Jamma from Bastien from Vancourt. Great, I mean just watching the Grasso racing team do the work here, great operations by everybody, the car's off the jacks, rolling gets clear of the car coming down. The pit lane there is the 88 Raffaele Marcello. So this is the Audi fending off the Mercedes as Will Stevens is quite entitled to do. But Raffaele Marcello looking the quicker, but he's just a bit stuck. There's the gap on the inside. Marcello goes for it. The Mercedes goes through, goes a little bit wide. The Audi, Will Stevens, the ex Grand Prix driver of the wheel, tries to fight back, but Raffaele Marcello is through. When you saw that yellow nose pointing <laughs> way, way into the turn two, the apex, but didn't even make the apex, he only got the entry but he barged his way through, I mean barged by the fact that he didn't have any contact, but he just forced a presence of whatever state of mind or whatever he is in. He said, I'm going to pass you, Will Stevens, and don't resist me. Yeah, make your own arrangements and coming through. So, while that's been going on, Bortolotti, who leads the way, is doing absolute best in the sectors. In second place is Bulatov, and then third is going to be Jack Manchester. And there he is, look, already, already on his outlap, reeled in by Marchiello. So this is going to change in a moment for third place. Yeah, I mean, it, it was, there's no argument about who's the quicker of the two drivers in the 88 and the, the 90 Mercedes. Jack Manchester is still young, learning his craft. And of course, you would like to think that there'll be a little bit of cooperation between teammates that they think, well, the smart thing is not hold up potential race winner with the car that, while it was outstanding with Nico Bastia, it is not going to have the same level of performance at this point with Jack Manchester. Now, Will Stevens goes down the inside. Jack Manchester, really, he... Well, he's going to make the undercut. Can he yeah. get... The, well, good thinking. Well done. Good thinking. And he gets it back, look, but he's on the wrong line for turn three coming down the hill. Because here, look, Will Stevens is going to have the inside line. The road's going to come to him. He'll get the job done. But Jack Manchester gave him room, slowed the car down, as you say, got the undercut. He got the undercut. He saw what was happening, but he got the benefit of Will Stevens running slightly wide on the exit. Oh, oh damage to the right rear. That's an attempt to Audi. And it's which one? It's 55, which has now been taken over by Pierre Kaffer. This is where the contact occurred. Yeah, yeah. A little rub, isn't it, from Calderelli. Well, gentle hands. Jack Manchester is doing a good job here. It's a circuit, of course, that's new to him. Keeping Christopher Hauser at bay. Christopher's been around the block for many times. March Yellow in the meantime, absolute best middle sector, pushing on another seven turns pulled out uh, from Waterlotti's advantage. He'd like a safety car, and so too would Christopher Hauser, because that would perhaps give him a chance on a restart to get past the Mercedes. Here is another of the fascinations of GT3 and the balance of performance, differing cars where they're strong, where they're weak, and Hauser eventually gets up the inside at turn 13, prizes open the door, and through he goes. Yeah, now, the lead gap is down by another second. It's down at nine and a half. Marcello, another fastest lap of the race. Fourth and fifth comes through. It's still Will Stevens ahead of Christopher Hauser as they go down towards turn one. In sixth spot behind is Jack Manchester. Hanging on to second in the Silver Cup. And look, two out is as one. Again, up the inside of the curve goes Hauser. It's a late effort, and Will Stevens slams the door in his face. Here again, watching into turn one. Looks up the inside, but the door is closing, closing. 
Incidentally, we saw a lot number one Audi out of the race. 17, Robin Fritz has pitted into retirement as well. So Stuart Leonard, the co-driver, second in the championship, is out of the race. And the championship leaders are out of the race. It's not been a good race for WRT. There is 17. So significantly, Stuart Leonard out and the River Ass Meese car out. The championship's going to be very intriguing after this. There's the fight for four. Stevens over the line. Hulza behind him as they go down towards turn one. Can Christopher Hulza make his move? He goes to the outside. He wants to try to get the undercut if he can. Is this it? Is yes. this it? Yes, it is. He's up the curb. The road will come to him in the king, but he's on the outside line for the next quarter. He's got to get the job done, and he does. He moves right across on Will Stevens. Very, very well earned position. That yes, that was a lot of hard work for, Dennis, uh, for uh, Christopher Hauser. It took a long, long time. Here you go again. Wide in. Gets the car slowed. Goes for the gap. Up the curb. Nails it. And you see, he's harder on the throttle going up the inside that Will Stevens is able to do on the outside. He's having to wait, 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 and then he's able to get back up on the throttle. So Paul Gelotti and Engelhart, they did win at the start of the season at Zolder. They look as though they're going to win here because although the gap has been coming down, they've got enough in hand. And Raffaele Marchiello once again, mightily impressive the way that he has thrown everything at this, but he's still not quite caught up to Bulatov. Now, are we going to get two more laps or one more lap out of this? A flying lap is a 1 minute 45. It's going to be the last lap, isn't it, this time? The race leader is about to emerge from turn 14 up towards the line. Oh, he spun Bulatov, oh. spun! Out of second place goes the Mercedes. Nico Jamma suddenly gets hit by a hammer blow. That second place disappears. That answers your team orders question. There certainly was none. It's down to a mistake. And here is how Marchiello saw that spin. Just turns in, turns in, and then it... I mean, I... Hard to tell what of the car has looked reasonably balanced entering in the corner and just slightly tail up and then a rotation and off she went. Nicolas Jama absolutely unbelieving of what he's seen. This is turn 12. Christian Engelhart made a demon start. We did wonder at the time whether it was really good or whether it's a little bit of an anticipatory start. Well, it was never investigated as far as the officials were concerned. It was an absolutely dead set great start. It was a brilliant first lap, a great opening stint by Engelhart. And a very impressive second stint by Mirko Bortolotti. Mirko Bortolotti and Christian Engelhardt win at the Hungara Ring in race one of the Blockbound GT Series Sprint Cup. That has dominated the race. It wins by 4.7 seconds to Raffaele Marciano and Michael Meadows, Nicolo Jama, and Denis Bulatov take third. Some very impressive drives on display up and down the pit lane here. But for the GLT Granta Racing Team, it is a win and an excellent job done by Engelhardt and Bortolotti. What about this? Simon Gachet and Christopher Hassa, fourth. Although the flags fluttered from the marshals, let's have a look at the results then of race one here in Budapest at the Hungara Ring. A win for the Lamborghini in the hands of Mirko Bortolotti and Christian Engelhardt ahead of Michael Meadows and Raffaele Marciello and then Nicola Jama and Denis Bulatov coming home third. Off the podium, Simon Gachet and Christopher Hauser four, but they are ahead of Will Stevens and Dries Van Thor's Audi. Then the Lexus of Christian Klein and Albert Costa from Nico Bastian and Jack Manchester. Atto Evan Cornet, eighth, Hauptmann Stolz, ninth, and Scott Horst and Van der Linde are tenth. Norman Siedler, eleventh at the back with Marcus Pauteler ahead of Peter Scott Horst and Pierre Kaffer in twelfth. 13th after a drive through, Loris Hesemann and Fromp Pereira. They had a spin as well, don't forget. Adrian Delina and Ricardo Fella, uh, 14th from Kenny Harbour and Tristan Vautier, the Pro Am winners from another of the penalised cars. Perez Compact and Calderelli's Lamborghini. That in turn ahead of Pitti Veron Bakti and Carlo Van Dam. They are second in Pro Am ahead of Neil Stevenart and Marcus Winkelhock with the Maltrex 19th and Andrew Watkins BMW. A retirement. So also uh, was the Fritz Leonard Audi and the Riveras and Nice Audi. So two significant cars in the championship not getting to the end and a good haul of points in contrast for Mirko Bortolotti and Christian Engelhardt. That has done them a lot of good in the championship and are delighted. Mirko Bortolotti is greeted by Christian Engelhardt. Thumbs up, smiles all round. Winners here in Hungary. Boys, a massive congratulations. What made you decide to go up the inside there when everyone was looking at the outside? I don't know. I think, first of all, today the conditions were a lucky charm because uh, in dry conditions we wouldn't have had a chance in the race. Uh, the pace from the Mercedes this weekend is massive and uh, when it started to rain we, we thought we might have a go and uh, had a really good start and uh, a really good stint. So I'm really happy for the team. Nice being back on the podium. Yes, absolutely. Great win for us. A massive start from Christian. Just a perfect job today. Uh, we knew that on pace we had absolutely yeah, no chance against the Mercs, but uh, 
Yeah, the gap was close, uh, was big enough when I when I took over and I managed to take it home. Really happy after going through hard times. Congratulations. Woo. Well done, Marco Bortolotti and Christian Engelhart. Race two promises to be another thriller. Race two here at the Hungara Ring promises to be a thriller, yes, but wet, yes. We have just had about 20 minutes of torrential rain, thunder, lightning, and the rain bouncing off the ground. It is still heavy rain, but there are levels of heaviness. What we do have is standing water on the track and the race is going to begin behind the safety car, perhaps not unexpectedly. Uh, yesterday when we had all this heavy rain, races were affected by the weather. There the leading car is out on track, that will assess just where the puddles are. But drivers, even on the formation lap round to the grid, were saying that there was a bit of aquaplaning going on and the uh, different areas of the circuit safer and more dangerous than others because of the amount of rain that's fallen in a very short space of time. It has been like this really for the last 36 hours or so and what we've had uh, is torrential rain for maybe half an hour or so followed by very hot conditions and it gets brighter we've never really had any sunny weather today but it's always threatened to break through uh, but this rain that wasn't forecast uh, up until yesterday uh, just will not go away and so the track is soaking wet the grid is formed and Alex Riveras and Christopher Meese as the championship leaders go into this race ahead of Rafael Marchiello needing points after crashing out yesterday Raphael Marciello and Michael Meadows second from Mirko Bortolotti and Christian Engelhart. Dries Van Thor fourth with Will Stevens ahead of Stuart Leonard, who's had a couple of different co-drivers to remember this year. Hence, he's on a different number of points from Robin Fritz, who's with him this weekend. Well, the rain falls. Let's hear from some of the drivers. Christian Engelhart, winner yesterday, first of all. Christian, yesterday's winner in conditions that were damp, but nothing like we've got now. But you'd have made a blinding start. Yeah, yesterday was really good. Uh, the start was, uh, yeah, it was fantastic. Um, I had a little bit of an advantage because uh, there's two guys in front were on the break when the green light came on, so that's why it was so, so big the advantage. And uh, yeah, clearly that was a deciding factor to win the race, uh, to come out of lap one in the lead. Um, but also the conditions were not dry, which was good for us because uh, in a dry, I don't think we have the pace this weekend. No. I Talk about dry, wet. At the minute, this is a biblical level of rain that's fallen. Track saturated. What does Merker Botolotti reported in? Yeah, he went out on track and basically he reported that he has aqua planning on the straight at 87 kilometers an hour. Um, so in that very moment, the team was pushing out the slicks. So uh, we're still prepared for everything. Uh, it seems like we might start under safety car conditions. At the moment, I think uh, it's hard to drive at all. Uh, we will see. Rain is getting a little bit less now, so let's hope we can race. But it's the volume of water that's the main problem. Yeah, exactly. There's so much standing water you cannot drive at the moment. Have a good one. Thank you. Interesting to hear that from Christian Engelhart. Too much standing water at the moment you can't drive. Well, we are told that the 10-minute board will be shown in two minutes' time. In other words, uh, at 20 past three, and the race will start behind the safety car at 15.30. Uh, the Blanc Pain GT Series Sprint Cup is, of course, this double-header format of one-hour races, mandatory pit window between 25 and 35 minutes. And the drivers in the cars now are, yes, sitting on a wet grid, but the rain is definitely easing. It's not drizzled yet, it's still rain, but certainly not as heavy as it has been over the last few minutes. There is Lucas Stoltz in the Black Falcon Mercedes that lines up on the outside of the front row of the grid, but the grid effectively becomes immaterial, doesn't it now, because they will all start one behind the other uh, as the cars leave behind the safety car. So the teams talking to their drivers, relaying the drivers' concerns and feelings and assessment back to race control. This weekend, the race director, Joel Doval, and he is the man that has to make the call as to how to start, when to start, if to start, given the conditions. Raffaele Marciello is the man that will start on pole position. Now, Raffaele is an absolute gun. If you follow GT racing, if you followed his single-seater career before that, you will know just how good he is. And uh, he was uh, one of the stars of the Suzuka 10 hours a week ago, victorious there for Gripper M. Now for ASP team with Michael Meadows, the co-driver. He charged his way into contention yesterday and took second after that late race spin from Denis Bulatov. Raffaele Marciello, amazingly, even though he and Michael are second in the championship, has not had a race win in the series this year. But that, you get the feeling, could all change uh, over the course of the next hour, depending on what the weather gods have in store. So the uh, Acker ASP 
Mercedes ensconced on pole position. And as you look down onto the grid, you can see just how treacherous those conditions are going to be. Raffaele has had a lap round to the grid. Standing in the pit lane, eager for his stint, is Michael Meadows. He's with John. Michael, would it be fair to say that Raffaele's got the short straw here this afternoon? Yeah, he did. I mean, I had, I had you know, slicks in the wet yesterday. He's just got a bit more standing water today, but... You know, the safety car starts a sensible thing, I think. It's not standing water, he's just going to have to pick his way through. You know, we need to go home with a finish and some points, and hopefully I can take over and do a sensible job. I've seen some of the cars doing maybe two or three laps to get acclimatised. Just how bad is it? I mean, I know the straight is very, very wet. Yeah, well, it's a bit like anyone who watched the Moto GP last weekend. It's a new surface here, and there's, it doesn't really run off, so it's a lot of standing water. It's tricky for the drivers, you know. Lelo's got the advantage of being at the front, so he can at least see the puddles. The guys behind him with the spray, it's going to be tough. It's being confirmed there'll be a safety car start. Controversial view about Silverstone there, Michael. Well, yeah, it was just this. I think it's just the, the new tarmac is that way, isn't it? It's designed to give high grip and low degradation, and the consequence is standing water, so that's the way it is. Dug yourself well out of that one, thank you. <laughs> that's a good BRDC member by Michael Meadows then. Uh, who will do the second stint in the uh, Aka ASP Mercedes. The national anthem plays as we get ready for the start of the race. Now there, you can see the puddles, you can see the rain falling, but I promise you, this is almost pleasant compared to what we had 10 minutes ago. If I peer out of the back of the box, the rain has almost stopped. It's certainly eased considerably. And the only way really we can judge what the conditions are like is by how much we can see in the distance. And it has got a lot brighter in the last five minutes. At the back of the Hungara ring is the Aqua Park. Couldn't see it a few minutes ago. Now it's visible once again. It's living up to its name. It's very aquatic over there. That's the grid. That's the pit straight uh, coming out of the last corner of turn 14. And the field all lined up, good to go. John Watson is down in the pit lane for the moment. David Addison trackside. John will be up here as soon as we get the uh, safety car formation lap underway. But for the time being, having a chance to uh, talk to some of the drivers and get their thoughts and feelings before we go into this eighth race of the season. And the safety car start is now eight minutes away. We've had the 10 minute board. The grid is uh, starting to be cleared of the VIPs and the rain has picked up again. So uh, having said it's eased, it's now just starting to get a little bit heavier once more. And this makes it impossible for the teams to predict. It's coming, it's going. I don't think we're ever going to get to a dry race in this, even if it were to stop raining now. The temperatures like they did yesterday go up. I mean, yesterday, uh, Andrew Watson started on wets and they were gone within about three or four laps. But today, there's, there's no suggestion that the sun is ready to break through and that the temperatures will reach what they were expected to do today, which was theoretically going to be the hottest and sunniest day of the weekend. So on a soaking wet circuit, uh, the grid formed. We've got the overall situation to look at. We've also got the Pro-Am competition and the Silver Cup newly introduced this year. Pro-Am yesterday won by Kenny Harbel and Tristan Vautier. Kenny went on to win the Block Pan GT Sports Club race at the end of the afternoon, but has been taken unwell overnight. Uh, Tristan Vautier was struggling yesterday morning with, with a, a sickness, a vomiting bug, and it looks as though Kenny Harbel has now been hit by that. He bailed out of the... Uh, sports club race at the start of the day and they're not on the grid for this the car has been withdrawn so it's a great shame because that car did do a very good job yesterday now not such a good job yesterday Alex Riveras who had a spin ended up in the wall and that has affected him in the championship Alex they say the rain in Spain falls mainly on the plane well we're in Hungary and it's everywhere Absolutely, you know, very, very unexpected uh, rain, torrential rain, we have to say, uh, here in Budapest, where we thought that we we're going to have the hottest race of the year, so we were preparing for it, but, uh, well, it turns out it's going to be wet today, which, uh, personally, I prefer, uh, as it's going to open up a bit more chances of, of uh, different things to happen during the race. I, I feel like the car is very strong in the rain, Audi has always been strong in the rain, and therefore we're going to have, uh, a, hopefully, a good race. But you're carrying an extra 30 kilograms of ballast here this weekend. Yeah, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna mention that or comment about that. Well, that actually, the rain might be a big leveler. It might sort of level out that weight deficit. I think the Mercedes are stronger on dry conditions, and we might be able to be stronger than them on wet conditions if we find the the fine tuning setup, which is going to be extremely difficult as we have no previous experience. So it's going to be kind of a gamble, and uh, I hope that with the amount of experience that WRT has 
and now the Haas in this championship we're gonna decide uh, properly and we're gonna have a, a quick car in the race now, if you can see under your windscreen where can you pass well it's it's gonna be difficult obviously turn one is always a, a good spot to pass it's it's you have the the um, strongest braking area of the track and it's quite wide but in wet conditions you know every every part of the of the track can be useful to to overtake we could see fernando alonso overtaking i don't know if it was like eight or ten cars in the first lap of the of the hungarian grand prix some years ago when he was driving for renault so therefore it's it's just gonna be about finding the right grip on the right part of the track and optimize it as much as you can and it's going to be a safety car start as well apparently yes it's going to start on the safety car i think it's the right decision as the as the track is uh, on quite slippery conditions right now it's going to be tricky out there so wishing the best of luck for my teammate uh, chris miss and uh, yeah let's go for it enjoy it thank you so much so Alex Riveras will do the second stint in the number one Audi. Yesterday it was a spin coming out of uh, turn 14 that put the car in the wall. And now the rain is getting heavier once more. So you see what I mean about how difficult it is for everybody really, not just the teams, but also the officials. They can't really guarantee what it's like from one minute to the next. There's no pattern. It comes, it goes, it gets heavier, it gets easier. And the grid now cleared, ready for the start of the race. We're into the final five minutes of the build-up and the cars will leave the line behind the safety car. The race will be on. So the uh, first time the cars cross the timing line, it will trigger the start of the race and then we will be uh, in business. We wait news, of course, and the race director probably doesn't have a feel for this yet as to how many laps uh, they will be doing behind the safety car. The teams would quite like to know, but really I think it depends on what feedback uh, race control gets from the drivers over the first couple of three laps and indeed of course from the uh, team inside the safety car they will be giving uh, information back but it will be expected a minimum of three laps behind the safety car three laps minimum the teams are being advised and after that then uh, we shall see whether it's uh, improving but it could be depending on what the weather gods have in store a lengthy period behind the safety car we'll see so three laps we're anticipating the first three laps of the race at least at least behind the safety car. One of the cars at the back of the grid uh, is the number 114 Lexus, which crashed early in qualifying and didn't do the qualifying session the second part for this race. It was Norbert Siedler that had a spin and put it in the wall, possibly caused by a punctured tyre. But pole position is Raffaele Marchiello. That's Marco Bortolotti, yesterday's winner. Third, it's not, don't forget, these days uh, for the Sunday race based on the results of the first. It's a standalone qualifying session, each session done by a different driver. So you start the race you qualify for, and uh, therefore, Marco Bortolotti, winner yesterday, lining up third on the grid. Lucas Stoltz, second on the grid, ninth in the race yesterday. The pole car, second in the race yesterday. So there is the leading car, making its way down the pit lane. And the information received from race control from I think I'm right in saying it's Eric Ellery that drives that leading car. Uh, track conditions much better now that the rain has eased again. Oh, in fact, stopped, he says, looking at the puddles behind the commentary box. So uh, things are improving, and uh, let's hope now that things will dry out, because a wet race is one thing, but a race that starts wet and dries out will throw another element into it as people have to make a gamble on tyres. Carlo Van Dam there, who was 17th yesterday, second in Pro-Am with the uh, car's owner, Pitti on Bacchetti. Carlo Van Dam will start, almost spooky setting now in the cloud in the mist the hungarari we're about 20 minutes or so outside of uh, budapest here and we are very shortly going to be in business because we're into the last couple of minutes then now of countdown there number one lining up on the inside of the third row double winners this year alex riveras and christopher meese the man behind the wheel of the car retired yesterday and therefore need points today they still have the advantage in the championship but it's a narrowed margin in the championship and a good wall of points is crucial today sixth on the grid uh, a combination that really impressed yesterday Simon Gachet who did the opening stint Christopher Hasser who starts today and as you expect from Christopher Hasser he threw everything at it in his last stint and got the car up into fourth place so the Santelot racing Audi one well worth watching engines fire up the marshals, the officials, and the team personnel make their way off the grid as we get set to go racing in this eighth race within the Blancpain GT Series Sprint Cup. We're at a very wet Hungara ring, and the grid now is cleared. 
the teams are ready and it's down to the man behind the wheel to respond to the conditions as best as he can. Three laps at least they will get to have a look at what the state of the track is like to see where the puddles are, all of which count within the hour and so the drivers in this stint other than making a mistake, can influence the race perhaps less than the driver that will do the longer, we hope, second stint behind the wheel. But we'll see how this race pans out. The lights flash, the clock starts, the race underway behind the safety car. And so the second race of the weekend in the Blancpain GT Series Sprint Cup is underway. We are behind the safety car because of the track conditions and three laps minimum we are advised. So Raffaele Marciello, as Michael Meadows, his co-driver, was saying he will have the best view, but also he's got to be the first man every corner, every lap, to assess what the grip levels are going to be like. He will be the first one on the scene, he will be the first driver to discover just what the track surface is like. Turning his way then now through the first right-hander at turn one. There you see going through the Mercedes, Audi, Lamborghini from mid-grid, which includes the SMP Racing by Aka ASP car. Alexi Corne will start. There's yesterday's winning car, number 63, Mirko Bortolotti, behind the wheel. The teams have an instant messaging service, so they can quickly fire off a message to race control, and it may be that those screens will light up shortly as drivers uh, are on the radio advising their teams what they think the track surface is like. But the officials have had a look and are leaving nothing to chance, understandably, so hence we start behind the safety car. Raffaele Marciello then in the Mercedes at the front of the grid. He leads the way that we are on lap one of the race. Uh, Raffaele Marciello comes now through turn five. Mirko Bortolotti there as he applies the power, getting a little bit sideways. That's turn five in the earlier uh, GT4 race that we had, which was wet and drying and then got wet again. It was noticeable how many drivers were going to the very outside line where there's a little bit more traction to gain places. But uh, right now, there's hardly a dry line anywhere in Hungary. It feels like it's just a soaking wet surface. Wipers are off, spray in the air, rain in the air, and the drivers now turn through uh, turns eight and nine. They will drop shortly down the hill once more, back towards that stadium section. Uh, but the safety car, as we understand it, will do a minimum of three laps before the cars are released. Looking out of the back of the box, as I say, looks like it has stopped raining for now at least, but the track conditions are absolutely treacherous and I do have some sympathy for the poor driver doing the opening stint in this race. It's a soaking wet surface and we're about to come to the end of lap one before we can even think about getting the race underway. But so much John Watson for a hot and sunny day in Hungary. I can't believe it. I mean, we thought maybe Saturday, okay, the rain's gonna fall, it's gonna clear, the air will be fine, it'll be sharp and it'll be bright and sunny. Well, I think for about two minutes, somewhere <laughs> part of Sunday it was, and then again, we had this torrential rain, enormous thunderclaps, probably the odd fork of lightning flashing around, and all the cameramen, of course, they're in elevated positions around this racetrack, they're not at ground level, they're all being brought down, the cameras are being locked out in some cases, but the cameraman being brought down to safety in case there's a lightning strike, it's all going off, it all bangs off here at Hungaro Ring and bang is what it's been, the thunder has been unbelievable. It has indeed, it's like skips colliding when you hear it. Now, uh, when we go racing, there's no semblance of a dry line. It, I think, has now stopped raining, but there is so much water. You were making the point to the drivers uh, in the pit lane before the race. There, look, Stuart Leonard and Robin Frint's car getting all crossed up, going into the braking area. That is Robin Frint at the wheel, so just exploring where it's wet. But you know, even at reduced speed, they're struggling for traction. Yeah, I mean, Mirko Bortolotti reported when he was doing, they were doing two or three in and out laps from the pit lane just to get familiarization with where the water might be standing. But of course, if they can't actually do a lap through the main start finish straight, they've got to go through the pit lane. But they reckon that at 87 kilometers per hour, they had the fastest. Lamborghini Hurricane world record was it floating all the way around the racetrack. <laughs> well, it's a first for us this doing powerboat commentary. Uh, there, Mirko Bortolotti running third in the race. It is a race. We are racing in quotes. Um, Raffaele Marciello leads the way. And look there, just going a little bit wider out of turn five, exploring where the grip level is. Now, this is Mirko Bortolotti. You're riding on board. It doesn't look that bad, but of course, they're not going at a proper pace yet. No, they're not. Uh, at this particular part of the track, we've just seen they're coming through turns five and six. Six and seven, in fact, is the S's around right the back of the circuit. Here, the level of water lying on the track, but watch on the outside of turn seven, because that was there. Uh, no, yeah. There you go. You've got a massive puddle if you stray into that, even on the full treaded deep from cut. 
wet weather tires, it will be very close to getting aquaplaning. So everybody needs to be careful, particularly in the opening lap. We saw actually a very well behaved field of cars in Saturday's sprint race when the majority started on slick tires on a damp track, nothing like we have here right now. And they all got through the first lap without any contact. Interesting as well, hearing Michael Meadows' uh, comments about likening this to what happened at Silverstone. But that point he made about it's another circuit that's been resurfaced. And is this now a trend that you get the high grip level, but you also uh, get this, this problem of drainage? Because clearly it's not unique to Silverstone. Well, I think with uh, Grade 1 Formula 1 racetracks, the new owners of Formula 1 are trying to find a common uh, composition for the track surface. But Silverstone, I understand, had been resurfaced before that new thinking from oh, okay. Liberty Media that own currently Formula One, uh, that that might be not put the, not the formula for the tarmac that they have prepared. So I don't know what's the case here in the Hungaro ring. Uh, I did think Michael bailed himself out of that question. He did a pretty good rescue job. It, it, it was he? impressive, wasn't it? Yes. Was that a reverse ferris or something it's called? Either way, Michael did a good job there. Let's see whether he can do as good a job behind the wheel of the Mercedes when he gets in. The safety car will be in this time. So this is lap three, and it's going to be the minimum three that the race director leaves the safety car there for on track. Uh, there you can see where the water is, what the spray is like. If you're in the middle of the field, uh, you are in for a pretty torrid time. And confirmation from race control, safety car is in at the end of this lap. You have no forward vision in reality. All you can do is use your reference points through your peripheral vision and try and get a make of whereabouts you are on the racetrack. And of course, you're looking out for landmark indicators such as corner braking markers. You can see them there on the left. Obviously, it's still under a yellow flag condition. That will then be taken in as the safety car comes in at the end of this lap. And then we'll be racing. And the yellow flags, I'm assuming, will likewise be withdrawn. The track will go green and this race will get underway. And underline the word in this sprint, it is the Block Pan GT Series Sprint Cup. We get used to talking about an hour of flat out racing. Well, they're going to be down to the best part of 50 minutes. There's less time for drivers to make progress up through the order if they need to. There is less time to determine your race result. There is less time in these drivers' stints before they have to get to that pit window. And so they are all going to be going for it. Grid levels, visibility levels allowing when we go green in a couple of corners time question that will have to be answered it'll come at the end of 25 minutes or so of this race well the pit lane window will open up after effectively 25 minutes which is going to be probably less than about 20 minutes or so will the track conditions have improved sufficiently in that driver mandatory change to enable a team to take the punt to put on a set of dry weather stick tires be a massive gamble if one does it particularly one of the leading cars then everybody else will probably follow suit if somebody further down the field thinks this is our way of maybe leapfrogging the cars that are naturally quicker than us on outright pace. Then I'm not sure everybody would follow suit. You've just you follow the leader, not the the maverick. That's true, and they'll be hoping, of course, that the weather has made up its mind by the time they pit. It might be they pit towards the end of the window to give themselves a bit more breathing space to assess the weather conditions as we get set to go racing. Because here at the Hungara Ring, we are about to go green. The safety car peels in at the end of lap three. It is the eighth race within the Blancpain GT Series Sprint Cup. And Raffaele Marcello floors the throttle, storms away. Lucas Stoltz goes after him second. It's a Mercedes 1-2. Third for Lamborghini, Marco Bottolotti. Fourth is Carlo Van Damme in the Ferrari. Fifth is the leading Audi, Christopher Meese. Sixth Audi, Christopher Hasser. Bortolotti gets out of the spray, has a look up the inside, down towards turn one. Very deep into the corner goes Stoltz. And look there, round the outside, Christopher Hasser tries to find a move on Meese. And he does it. Gets his nose in front of the white Audi. He'll have the inside line for the next corner as they pierce the gloom. On the inside line is Christopher Hasser. Christopher Meese, number one in the grey and red Audi on the outside line. Lose his track position on the outside line, but he might gain it back because he'll have the inside and turn three at the bottom of the hill. Look, he goes back through on the inside as he made it. He has. He's got ahead of the Ferrari as well, I reckon. Well, Carlo Van Dam went wide. Indeed, it was a big, big move from Christopher Meese going the long, long way around turn two, then trying to get the nose up on the inside. He's managed to do it, and they, as you pointed out, got past the Ferrari at the same time. By the way, painted, refreshed paint in those curves in turn four just to add a little bit further. <laughs> Let's oh, hold that on the Lexus off, as is one of those. Is that the 1790? Yeah. Yes, it is. That was Robin Frintz going after Albert Costa.
So Albert Costman goes wild. Robin Frins was gauging his pace against the car ahead and ran out of road. So Marcello leads Stoltz. Mercedes one and two. Bortolotti Lamborghini third. Meets back up to fourth. House of fifth. There, Carlo Van Damme is about to have a bit of a wobble. He runs wide. Dennis Bulatov is behind him, who had a spin at the end of yesterday's race. But up the inside now goes Albert Costa, looking for a way by, and he's taking with him Robin Frins in the Audi. Van Damme here is the cork in the bottle. Yeah, indeed. It looks like the Lexus has got a little bit more grip. The Mercedes tries to slide up the inside. Very difficult, Dennis Bulatov again the track position you know you go offline there'll be a lot more standing water now it's almost a white height as they come down in to turn 12 the ferrari snakes under brakes the city is more stable ferrari has got a way to get back on the throttle bullet top will try and maybe look down the inside he's not sufficiently but christopher hauser christopher meese side by side yet again in turn 13 and still Hasser can't get the drag up the hill so Christopher Meese hangs onto the place same type of car two different teams wrt ahead of santalot Christopher Hauser in the blue and white Santa Lock car, losing about half a length as he comes onto the pit straight, but then squirts the power down. The leader, Marcello, is two seconds to the good. Stolz second, third is Bortolotti. Mercedes, Mercedes, Lamborghini. And then the next ball of spray has two Audis within. And on the inside line is Meese. Hauser tries the outside line again, very deep into the corner. Can he get the cut back? That's what he's looking for. He's trying to get the undercut, get on the throttle a little bit earlier as the Dennis Bulatov trying to make the move on Carlo Van Damme. And the, well, a bit of a hip and a shoulder there at the exit of turn one from one of the Lamborghinis and an Audi but back down into turn two Christopher Hasser trying to do again what he attempted one lap ago Christopher Meese likes that long line there's more grip out there in these conditions than you would already know in dry conditions hoping that that's going to work for him and it certainly did in the exit of three Marcello, the race leader there in the yellow and black Mercedes, getting away from Lucas Stoltz. Third is Bortolotti, and then the next pair coming through together. Uh, Meester, to the head of Hasser, Carlo Van Damme keeping Bulatov at bay. Eighth is Albert Costa, ninth is Robin Frins, and tenth is Front Pereira. Christopher Hasser sitting in the spray, and there, look around the outside, is Bulatov on the inside line, is Frins. Frins is trying to get through. Bulatov's going backwards here, but he runs wide. He's got a bit more grip. The Mercedes hauls itself clear, but then on the inside for the chicane, Robin Fritz charges up the inside. Van Damme is off the road, so is Bulatov, so is Pereira. They all go over the curbs. Yes, yeah, so just too many cars in such a small part of the racetrack fighting for position, and both cars went off there. Bulatov now finds a way up the inside of Carlo Van Damme, but still the Ferrari manages to keep his nose ahead. Van Damme may not have the quickest car, but he's got one of the widest, hasn't he? And he knows exactly where to position it. Here comes Bulatov, Bulatov pulls it off, goes through on the inside. That was brave, that worked. Sideways coming out of turn 11, and Dennis Bulatov, is he still ahead as they come back through the gloom? No, he's not. Van Damme is on the outside line. Bulatov is up the curb. Carlo Van Damme slots in behind him. Next is Fritz, then it's Costa in the Lexus from Pereira. Next in the queue to the inside line comes Robin Fritz, and Dennis Bulatov is ahead now, and I think he's about to stay there, except for the fact that he goes a little bit wide out of turn 13. But it's Albert Costa's the one I want to keep an eye on in the Lexus, trying to squeeze up the inside of the two oh, oh, oh. He gets past the Ferrari, certainly, and Robin Fritz has had to back out of it. He's now. The Lexus has got his eyes on Dennis Bulatov and the Mercedes coming down the straight. They're going on to their sixth lap. And Robert Finch, he thinks he's got an opportunity, having lost that on that last two corner sequence, of getting ahead of the Ferrari into turn one. So Dennis Bulatov, having run off the road at the chicane, heads this battle pack now. Albert Costa in the Lexus, Carlo Van Damme on the outside line in the Ferrari. Drivers are being warned about track limits. They've got enough hassle with grip levels and visibility that they do need to stay on the track as best they can. It's not an excuse to go shortcutting. Carlo Van Damme in the blue and yellow Ferrari there is on the inside. Robin Frintz in the Audi 17 on the outside line at two. That will translate to the inside line at turn three. Frintz goes through, does he? Yes, he does. He makes the move and he goes on the outside, or tries to, of Dennis Bulatov. But the red Mercedes, I think, will just hang on to the place on the run up the hill now. So just got a glimpse of third place Merkin Bortolotti, he's now 5.5 seconds behind race leader as they Robin Fiennes and the Mercedes Bulatov all literally they're on each other's door handles. There is more grip in these conditions generally around the outside. Robin Fiennes in the middle of the racetrack, Carlo Van Damme on what will be the normal racing line. Again, door handle to door handle, almost this is a repeat of what we saw one lap ago. The Mercedes goes off as does the 82 behind the Lamborghini Frank Pereira. That's going to give an advantage to uh, Robert Fritz, but of course the Ferrari and the Mercedes getting close together as the 25 Audi gets involved. And also people suddenly have their lines affected by cars rejoining in this contest there. Around goes the other Santelot car, that's the Winkelhock, uh, Marcus Winkelhock, Neil Stevenhock car, Marcus Winkelhock at the wheel, I think he got a tap in all that commotion that was going on as cars were rejoining after their gravelly moments. Winkelhock's back in the right direction but it's now stalled. The leaders come down the hill, so Robin Frins has gained out of all of that. Bulatov off and back off. There is Marcus Winkelhock who rejoins. Yes, he had to get the car out of gear and then go back to a little bit of a reset to get it fired back up again. 
But this is the battle between the two Christophers, Mason, fourth, Passer, and fifth, back into turn 14. Both now using the long way around turn, making a very, very late apex. But you can see the, the slip angle on Christopher Hassel's idea as he was coming out of turn 14, indicating there is little or no grip at all. Lap times are getting better, so as the cars now have done effectively the first 15 minutes, some behind the safety car, uh, lap times are coming down, and also have a look at the gap coming down, third to fourth and fifth, because Bortolotti is being caught, isn't he, here by the two Audis, even though they are squabbling, they're catching the Lamborghini. Yeah, and I don't know what the, the problem that Mercury Bortolotti has, but he doesn't appear to have what would be just raw pace compared to these charging Audis behind, and of course, while they're battling with each other under normal circumstances, that would actually hinder your progress, but they still seem to be managing to claw back the Lamborghini Huracan in third place. Raffaele Marchiello comes out of turn five, as there, Christopher Hasser on the back of the number one Audi, Christopher Meese. Uh, Hasser has seen precious little of anything in this race other than spray. Now he goes to the inside line, but Meese will have the grippier outside line, and look, he gets the drive out of the corner. And he's away. Another length pulled out over Hassa. And also, Bortolotti suddenly has just been able to gain a little bit of ground over them as Thierry Tassin, nearest to us in the spectacles, and Vincent Voss, the two team principals at WRT, study the data and see Christopher Meese running in fourth place. So it's like a couple of ferrets in a sack squabbling away at these two Audis. It's um, very intense, and that was the, the intense look we saw from Vincent Voss, the boss of WRT. In reality, he doesn't want the rival to the Santa Lock team putting that kind of pressure onto his driver, Christopher Mason, though number one Audi. But hey, guys, this is a motor race. It's not a Sunday afternoon drive in the rain in the Hungarian countryside. Exactly right. And we're all the better for it because this is great to watch, isn't it? Despite the conditions, or perhaps because of the conditions, we are being treated to a great battle. Up front, Rafael Marchiello leads by three seconds from Luca Stoltz. It'll be Michael Meadows versus Hubert Hout in those cars, which will be interesting in the second stint. Third, Bortolotti, who will give way to Engelhardt. And there, Christopher Meese just ahead of Christopher Hasser, both Audi factory drivers coming up towards the timing line. Remember, there is a mandatory pit stop. Everybody makes a stop in this race between 25 and 35 minutes, and they must do a driver change. Well, now things have kind of stabilised and settled down. Still, Christopher Hasser looking for the opportunity to get ahead of the number one Audi, the WRT entry. And Christopher Meese now, I think, seems to have got the measure of Christopher Hasser. He's not having to be aggressive in any form when it comes into braking zones. He's able to pick and choose the piece of racetrack and know that he will always come out slightly ahead as we go on board. This is with the Lamborghini as it drops down through turn three, just avoiding the curves where possible. Or if you're going to run it, try and run it in as straight a line as you can. And from that onboard shot, admittedly no spray being generated, life does not look that bad. Christopher Hasser up the curb, he has tried everything to get past Christopher Meese. Here he goes again on the inside, this is the best chance yet. But Meese on the outside will have a little bit more grip coming off the corner. Hasser slides into number one, Christopher Meese is similar Audi. They run absolutely dead level down towards the chicane, this is Hasser's chance. Yes, through he goes on the inside line, but he's sideways, he's up the curb. He has worked very hard for that, and finally it's paid off. Yeah, that was a tough move, but both drivers tough tonight. Both knew that if they allowed Christopher Meese to get alongside going into turn six, then it was all over. Christopher Meese did what he could running on the outside. They did tangle door handles, but all's fair in rain and uh, wet conditions. Here in Budapest, then, it is a Mercedes 1-2, Lamborghini 3, and now that Christopher Hasler has been released from behind Christopher Meese, what can he do about that leading car? Lap times are coming down all the while now, so Portolotti third being chased by Hasler, there is Marchiello, we know he's a star in GT cars, he was a star in single-seaters in his earlier days as well, and Raffaele Marchiello, who shone last week in the Suzuka 10 hours on his way to success, comes over the line, and that lap is the best of the race, 2 minutes 0 0.709. He's edging away from Lucas Stoltz. Same sort of car, again, like we had in the case of the Audis, two different teams. But of course, the, the, the number six Audi, number six Mercedes is in the Silver Cup. So it's in its own race yeah. in terms of what they're looking to achieve. Running second overall is pretty impressive, but, but Lucas Stoltz hands over that number six car, which he will do very shortly to Hubert Haub. Then maybe its position might be as representative as we're looking at it right now. So downhill goes Lucas Schultz, Hubert Haupt will take that car over. Hubert Haupt is a hugely experienced driver. Michael Meadows, double Carrera Cup GB champion, former single-seater gun, he will take over this leading car, Marchiello, up the kerb. Trying to give himself as much room as he can. Raffaele 
he loves a bit of curb. <laughs> he uses curb where there is no curb. And even in these wet weather conditions, when sometimes running the curb could be more of a, a hindrance than a, than a benefit, he took bunches of curb, particularly coming through turn four again on the exit of six, using a lot of curb. Well, here's the tricky part of the racetrack, just going through turn seven because it is still very wet on the outside of the corner. Lucas Stoltz, in the meantime, has pulled back a couple of tenths in the first sector on this lap, so Lucas Stoltz certainly is not giving up, is he, in his quest to get onto terms with the leader. Their third is Bortolotti having a bit of a wobble as he comes into turn eight. Just about gets away with that, and behind him, Christopher Hauser was quicker in sector one. He's bringing down that gap, so Mirko Bortolotti, yesterday's winner, is going to feel the pressure shortly from Christopher Hauser. Look at the way the Audi comes into shot, absolutely on the limit. Yeah, I mean, Vizio visibly was much quicker coming through turns 9 and 10 as Christian Engelhardt now begins to prepare he knows that he's got at the most four and a half minutes or so in case uh, Grasso Racing want to bring in Mercury Bortolotti but you can watch the back of the Lamborghini coming out of turn 11 certainly sliding around turn 12 and then Christopher Hassan taking the long way around the middle part of turn 13 to get the straightest possible exit to enable him to get the power on and get as much traction as possible just Thinking ahead to the other side of the pit window, where do you get to as you go down the leaderboard for the most evenly matched team? Are Marcello and Meadows more evenly matched than, say, Portolotti and Engelhardt? It's going to be a really interesting second part of the race. I would think that Engelhardt and Portolotti are probably closer because Raffaele and Marcello is so outstanding that you know, even as great as Michael Meadows is, I think that Raffaele is one of those guys who's a star. Yeah. And I think that's where the, the, the difference, if any, will appear. And, you know, he just, he's a racer. He's a 100% racer. He doesn't allow any conditions to phase him. He knows he's there to do a job and he's got the confidence and the skill to ensure he can carry that out. My point being, in a sense, that with first to third being 13 and a half seconds, the second part of the race when you get the co-driver, the second driver in these cars, it's really going to be interesting to see who makes progress, who might drop pace. There, whoops, big, big slide into their contact. Bulatov goes around and Andrea Caldarelli goes around as well. Indeed, and, so there was a little bit of contact yeah. and I would say Andrea slippery when wet, Andrea Caldarelli, I think that was pretty much an avoidable incident as the consequences both cars go around. If you're going to pass in that little, little kink which is turn three, you've got to be absolutely clear. And in these track conditions, if the driver ahead of you maybe isn't fully aware of your track position, it's possible that the outcome we've just seen. So that delays Denis Bulatov. Great shame because he and Nico Jamma have been really impressive this weekend. Rafael Marciello has just done the absolute best of anybody in the middle sector, even though he was being caught in the first by Lucas Stoltz. So the gap yo-yoing a little bit, and it has come down to 3.9 seconds. There, way up the curb again is Christopher Hassel, who is a joy to watch at the moment, isn't he? Yeah, I mean, he's throwing his idea around with abandon, but principally with confidence, because you don't slide a car like that unless you know that car is going to be with you. So, however, that particular, the 25 Audi is set up, as opposed to the, tw the number one, which is the Christopher Meese car, looks to me as if Christopher Hassel has got a little bit more options and flexibility in what he's doing behind the wheel and with the throttle village. Look how wide they all run into turn 14, find the grip on the outside, then move across, almost making it like a, a second apex for the cutting point, the clipping point coming through the corner, over the line. Marciello, another best lap of the race, 2 minutes 0 0.3, and further down the order, Calvin van der Linde is doing absolute best in sectors in the seventh place, number 66 Audi. So, the race leading car, four seconds to the good now, Marcello stretching the gap again over Stolz, Portolotti is still third, fourth passer, and at the moment you're riding on board the fifth place, number one Audi, Christopher Meese behind the wheel, ahead of teammate Robin Fritz. So, uh, Christopher Meese having lost that position to Christopher Hauser, is trying to consolidate, but there's not a huge amount he's able to do. So down through turn three, this incline up into turn four, it's a blind apex, you kind of just point the car and you'll take a part or a ball of the curb on the inside. It's the exit, you can see that painted red and white curb, then the green and white curb, which was apparently repainted last night, which will no doubt be the reason why more drivers are staying away from it than they might have done in yesterday's conditions. Through the chicane goes Marco Bortolotti, yesterday's winner, Hauser behind him. We're also now getting number three out of Ricardo Feller, doing an absolute best in the first sector. He's down in 11th place. I mean, purple, 11th. I have to get my head on that one. Yeah, exactly. Uh, one car that's not really achieving very much in this, sadly, after engine dramas on Friday, number two, Will Stevens, uh, Audi. It started 16th on the grid and is 17th. It's really striking. But Carlo Van Damme's Ferrari has dropped a long way back as well. Yeah, I mean, again, a lot of it will be car set up. 
some cars will be set up maybe more inclined to a dry track. Some might have gone the other route and gone for a totally wet car setup. That's where experience of the driver and the team can work it out. And with these conditions, the, the rain, heavy rain, came really quite late in the preparation phase of everybody getting ready to go to the grid. So those teams that are on top of their game might have been the ones that have managed to get the best from their car in difficult conditions. So the race leader has done 11 laps now. They're third. Mirko Bortolotti chasing after Luca Stoltz, but losing time. The gap first to third is going up, isn't it? It was 13 seconds a couple of laps back. Kelvin van der Linde has just done the fastest lap of the race now. Two minutes, 0.232 in the seventh place. Audi, that's interesting. Yep, another sterling drive from Kelvin van der Linde. We saw that with his brother in Spa 24. And these are, these are as tricky conditions as you can get, but he's got a small amount. He's got a second between himself and... Robin Freeze as the number two idea in at the earliest opportunity for Will Stevens to hand over to Dries Van Thor and it's been a thoroughly you know, unfortunate weekend for that number two idea. And then number 90 coming in is Jack Manchester. The pit window is open so this is an early stop to get the Silver Cup youngster out and put Nico Bastian Poles into the yesterday's race into the car. Yeah and I think that's probably a good decision by the team to get him in and uh, that Nico Bastian who is clearly the picker of the two drivers and in difficult conditions Jack's done the best job he can to bring the car around he's kept the car on the track there's no damage to the car that's all he could have been asked to achieve as we go back to third I'm oh, sorry Raffaele Marcello the leader and he's got what was a fairly comfortable four and a half second gap and it looks to be around about the same kind as Lucas Stoltz goes to the middle of the track and I mean, again, these leading cars, as you pointed out, David, earlier, I suspect are going to stay out until the last possible moment as Christopher Hasler gets it well and truly really sideways to get a gauge. Is it going to look towards it might dry if there's no more rain? It's too wet right now. They've got, what, nine minutes or so before they have to make that judgment. So there, number 63, Mirko Bortolotti. Runs wide, a bit more grip, but also a little bit more water there just to keep the tyres cool. Prolong that life. Another fastest lap by Raffaele Marchiello. Two minutes, 0 0.163. We're not quite yet below the two minute mark. As there, look, Van der Linde comes up onto the tail of Fritz. This is for sixth and seventh for Van der Linde in the grey out. It is really pushing now. Yeah, and Kevin Van der Linde has been making progress all the way through since the race got underway behind the safety car, running directly under the rear wing of Robin Fritz, who's not about to concede unless he is forced this is up for sixth place kelvin van der linde looks to go the long way around robin Prince takes the inside line but drifts out because he can't really get the car slowed down to hold that line and manages to hold on to his sixth place but van der linde quicker of the two audi drivers as we go on to that 13. so there down through turn two robin friends on the outside line that'll be the inside for turn three so he keeps the place more and more of the pit stops cycling through dennis bulatov is in that incident by the way that he had with uh, Andrea Caldarelli, that's being looked at. It was uh, a bit more than a love touch between the two, wasn't it? Because it's uh, ultimately affected the race for Bulatov, spinning him down the order as you look at the Audis. We've had some great Audi battles in this race, and here's another one, Van der Linde diving up on the inside. But, of course, Fritz on a grippier outside line just powers out of the corner. Yeah, I mean, it's the longer way around the corner, but it's the quicker way around because there's more fundamental bite from what would be normally called a green part of the racetrack. But in these conditions, there's no rubber or detritus on the racetrack. Therefore, in wet track conditions and wet weather tyres, that normally is the quicker way to exit a corner. So, a drive-through penalty for number 19 for causing a collision. Andrea Caldarelli gets a drive-through penalty for causing the collision, turning around Dennis Bulatov. Well, that, that's obviously a great disappointment to the entire Grasso Racing team that uh, Andrea Caldarelli has been adjudged the, the guilty party and no doubt when he gets out of the car he'll find some consolation for a penalty which he might feel was... Well, it wasn't all my fault. The race leader goes through. 13 laps are done. Fritz just fending off Van der Linde, who goes for the inside, leans on him, gets up the curb. He's going to be ahead, but he's going to be on the outside line for the next corner. Robin Fritz forced out wide. Look, dives up the inside. They touch again. Van der Linde goes wide. Fritz goes deep as well. That was more than a touch, I tell you. That was <laughs> Robin Fritz with the blinkers on, deciding, uh, you tap me in turn 13. I'm going to return the favour. And I think he added a bonus with that favour. But again, retains his sixth position. But Kelvin van der Linde, now his dander is up. Oh, is it ever. 
down to turn one. He wants the inside line. He's going to go. Work. Yeah, absolutely. A legacy of the contact. You can see the damage on the rear of Van der Linde's grey Audi. So he's got the inside line for the king here at effectively turn one B as it is on the track map. Down to turn two. Tries to switch sides. He's going to be at the back of Prince if he's not careful. He's on the wrong line. So he runs out a little bit deep. And Robin Fritz survives at least for the moment. And while all this is going on, there is a warning about track limits to the race leader, Raffaele Marchiello, being warned about track limits. Now, John made the point a few laps ago that Raffaele loves a bit of a curb. He, he certainly does, and here in turn four in particular, uh, is on the entry to that corner is where he's been taking a lot of the inside track. There may be other bits around the circuit, we're not following race leader every single lap. We're watching in this battle, this absolutely fascinating battle between two young chargers, Robin Frins, and Kelvin van der Linde uh, in identical cars, maybe just mod small differences in terms of preference in setup, but both drivers absolutely pushing, as we did see from the two Christophers yes. a little bit earlier. And their incident is being looked at, it's under investigation. Well, one did it to one, one did it to the other. That kind of balances, doesn't it? I think what they might look at is Robin Frins's response yeah. to what we saw Kelvin van der Linde do. It was a slightly more aggressive response, I think, coming into turn 14 from Robin Frins than we saw in turn 13 from the South Africans' uh, RD. Fair point. Now look at this, Christopher Hassa finally has got himself onto the back of Mirko Bortolotti now, the two of them together out of turn 13, the climb up the hill. Now don't forget we're in the pit window, so at any moment these cars could bail, but the point is still valid. They're leaving it to the very end to see whether it's worth going on to slip. I don't think it is yet, though. And uh, let's watch and see again what's going to go on with these two boys enjoying themselves. Robin Finn takes the very long wide way round, gets a good drive off turn 14. Kelvin van der Linde, the slightly more traditional line, doesn't get that motivation off the final turn. The only question I have is if everybody waits until the last minute, we're going to have an exceedingly busy pit lane. And if you're coming in when the pit lane is virtually maybe half a dozen or maybe more than that, cars having their service and driver change, it will make it slightly more complex and more critical to get your car lined up absolutely parallel with your garage. I'd go along with that. We've just got from Pereira in to give way to Loris Hesemans, who had a spin yesterday. And there, Robin Frins, the car squirming underneath him, drops downhill once more. So number 17, Audi, pushes on as there, about to rejoin. Look, he's 82. Now Loris Hesemans at the wheel, replacing from Pereira. That's Marcus Winkelock in after his early spin, and the slower Neil Stevenart will take over. And there you can see just how that 26 Audi was parked absolutely perfectly within its box. It's all marked out pre the race by the team. This is where you have to park. Is that going on to slicks? Can't really tell. It's hard even to tell the when they take the wet weather tires off what we're putting back on. Certainly a load of wheel spin. It would be a big ask at this point because generally I would think that the overall balance still will favour the wet tire with yeah. what 27 minutes remaining. If the sun comes out, which it's not likely to do. We'll see. We'll see. Robin Frins must give a position back to Calvin van der Linde. The officials agree with you, John. They didn't like his rather robust response. So Robin Frins must give way to Calvin van der Linde. Yeah, I mean, that was a bulldog move. And the reality was it forced van der Linde off the racetrack. He had all four wheels off at the entry into turn 14. So consequently, the penalty is give that position back. But Christopher Hassa, is that Christopher Hassa coming? Or is that Robin Frins? Christopher Hassa coming in. So the fourth place Audi, the Audi, it is the lead Audi so far, is into the pits. Christopher Meese will retain or regain that fourth place. And so let's see what they do for tyres here. The Santa Lot squad is ready. There is Simon Gachet, ever improving quick young driver, who will take over. And we wait to see more cars coming down the pit lane because you've got van der Linde in, Frins in, Costa in, Fella is in. Uh, Kelvin van der Linde came in ahead of Robin Frins, so I reckon the place was given back. And those are wet weather tyres, they're going to wet weather tyres, certainly on the 25, because yeah. the reality is uh, it, it is still too wet with 26 minutes or 26 and a half minutes remaining. So the 25 already gets out, we're looking at the number. Robin Frins car 17, so that'll be Stuart Leonard, but he stalled, he stalled, you know, he, had, he was held back momentarily, for otherwise it would have been an unsafe release, so he gets, and it's the 25 that comes out fractionally ahead of the 17, which is how it has been pretty much, and in fact it's now almost like a natural evolution that the 25 is ahead of the 17, there was, 
an instruction from the stewards to let the 25 car ahead of the 17. It's happened during the pit stop. So there is the race leader, Rafael Marciello. It was 66, wasn't it? It was the Van der Linde car that needed to go ahead of 17. I think the Hasa Gache car was there oh, anyway, yes, was it not? Like so uh, what I was just thinking was that on that pit stop, 17 has gone back ahead of 66 and is a lot closer to 25. Leader is in. Really and second place. Yeah. Everybody's got to come in now. There's not enough time to do another lap, so sure. they waited until the very last moment, and we'll expect to see third place Lamborghini following in as Raffaele Marcello makes his way down pit lane to hand to Michael Meadows. Let me just throw you something else here. Absolute best middle sector of the race on his first flying lap. Dries Van Thor down in 15th place. Not surprised because <laughs> that young gentleman is a megastar. Not great. Saw so that Spa in his qualifying lap. Outstanding qualifying lap. And again, the skill that uh, Dries Van Thor has evolved over the last couple of seasons has just been uh, exemplified in that middle sector time. Wet for the leading car, so the track still very, very slippery, very treacherous, and the leading quartet into the pit lane now. So there is the 25, Simon Gachet, went back to the stop. The 88 is rolling, Michael Meadows now behind the wheel as the ID executes its change. Oh, one of them engineers fell over, rolling the wheel back into the garage. I think that was clear. There shouldn't be any issue about that. So the Lamborghini is rolling. The 88 back, in, in effect, will retain the lead once yeah. everybody's washed through, and it'll be pretty much... There we see the number one. That's a great job by Christopher Meese, having to hang in and really work very hard. And Alex Ramirez, who had that incident in the middle of the sprint race on Saturday afternoon, didn't mention that in the interview. But have a look at number one because it's got back ahead of 25 hours, it hasn't it? Remember, Christopher Hassel worked so hard to get ahead, and now Alex Riveras in number one is ahead of this car. So on the pit stops, 25 has lost out badly. There, look, number 17 down to the braking zone. That's now Stuart Leonard. Behind him, 66. That goes the way of Stein Scotthorst. 17 staying ahead for the moment as they drop down the hill. So Stein Scotthorst, winner at the start of the season at Zolder, takes over from Calvin van der Linde. Uh, the 17, now oh, there we go back now to, well, it is in effect Michael Meadows in the lead with just over 23 minutes remaining. Cautious over the curbs and his out lap doesn't want to be over aggressive, wants to get a sense of what the racetrack is. Probably conditions now are not dissimilar to how they might have been, maybe slightly worse, I should say, than they were on Saturday afternoon. But remember, they're all on wet weather tyres as opposed to what they did yesterday when they started on slicks. Whoa, way up the curb there, a hard-charging Alex Rivera. There, number 66, also going deep, is Stein Kronkhorst as he tries to get onto the tail of Stuart Leonard. Reigning Blanc Pan GT Series champion for WRT as they slide their way out of the chicane. Stuart Leonard running in sixth place. Van der Linde at seventh as they turn through towards us. 66, Stein Kronkhorst. The radio has gone down, so it also has a number 19. Lamborghini, so there are one or two drivers here, somewhat in the dark, as Scott Hills tries to make his move against the WRT car now. Yeah, I mean, it's very tight all around the back of the circuit. You can catch, but you can't pass, and all yeah. you can do is Stuart Leonard goes slightly defensive in the middle of the racetrack, but the 66 is going to have the better opportunity on the exit, but slightly messes it up by getting a little under, under brakes into turn 12, but under acceleration, gets up alongside. This is where we saw Audi's door handle Whoa. to door handle a few moments ago the long way round normally is the quicker but Stuart Leonard seems a good grip of traction on a fresh set of tyres everybody's going under fresh wet tyres these are not used wet tyres unless you have to manage to have a special set of meters. So it's the same battle, but the different drivers in the cars. Now, there is 39, which is Pity Beron Bakhti now, leading in Pro-Am. We didn't, mustn't forget the classes. So Pro-Am is being led by Pity Beron Bakhti, and it is Neil Stevenart's Audi second, the Silver Cup, by the way, at the moment, uh, being led by uh, Hubert Hampton, Lucas Stoltz. Also, number 63 Lamborghini, Christian Engelhardt, Mirko Bortolotti, the pit stop is under investigation. Now, is that a legacy of the mechanic falling over? I don't know, but certainly I saw one of the mechanics who was taking a wheel from the rear of the car away, stumbled and kind of tumbled over the wheel. Yeah. I don't know whether that will be deemed to be a technical fault or whether it'll be just in these very difficult and wet conditions, even for the mechanics, you know, a small misplace of your foot could cause a stumble. So I think that would be my view of that incident, given the benefit of the doubt in these very difficult wet weather conditions. And it is tricky in the pit lane, make no mistake. Sure, there's number 19, Andrea Calderelli's car, uh, now with Ezequiel Perez-Compank at the wheel, serving his drive-through, which has been hanging over them. 
Uh, that's another car that's got no radio, so they've had to stick out a pit board in order to get the message across. And down the hill goes number 63, as goes number 19, Lamborghini now. Dries Van Thor up into the top nine, now number two. He is having a great stint. Will Stevens seems to be struggling. Dries Van Thor is absolutely flying, but this is the race leader. This is Michael Meadows. He and Raffaele Marchiello definitely overdue a win this year, and we have got just under 21 minutes to go. They lead by eight and a half seconds. And he's got the benefit of having a sister Mercedes, the number six, the car that Lucas Stoltz started the race in. Eight and a half seconds behind before he then gets a further three seconds behind as the Lamborghini 63 Christian Engelhardt. So all the good work at the start of the race that Raffaele Marcello has done has given Michael Meadows the opportunity to consolidate. He doesn't have to go quickly, he just has to keep the gap between first and second, but primarily probably between first and third. The charging Lamborghini with Christian Engelhardt, that's all he needs to do. Engelhardt, though, he's lapping quicker than the two ahead of him. He's going to be on the tail of Hubert Hout very soon. Now, look, driver's moving across to keep the tyres cool. There goes Simon Gachet in fifth. It's sixth place behind. It's Calvin van der Linde, who's ahead now of Stuart Leonard. Look, Leonard has dropped to place. Eighth there, Loris Hesemans. And ninth in the background, number two, Dries van Thor. Yeah, Dries van Thor will be trying to laser in on the back of Loris Hesemans. But Hesemans done a good job so far. The 82, Frank Pereira handed it over. So the young Belgian, I think he is, rather than his father being Dutch, mm. uh, is learning on, on the race. Lower down, Norbert Seedler's Lexus up to 12, up to 13th has come Peter Schrockholst, up to 14th Nicolas Germain, up into 16th Nico Bastien, and there is Nico Bastien at the back of this little group as Vladimir Abdoev tries to go around the outside of Germain. This is 14th, 15th and 16th. It's like Formula Mercedes, isn't it? Because the three AMG GT3s has won. One make racing. Certainly at a, a different threshold, financial threshold, <laughs> but Nico Bastia clearly the quicker of all three drivers, more experienced and knows where it is possible to make a move and he gets the Mercedes into the 90 alongside and gets through in turn three. Drive-through penalty, number 63, Christian Engelhardt, a pit stop infringement, a drive-through penalty for the third placed car. Love to know what the infringement was, was it what we saw just momentarily? Now let's have a look at the pit stop here, John. Yeah, watch at the back of the car. The mechanic, he stumbles. Now, was that a slip, a trip, or just whatever? But it was on the pit lane. He was on the white line side of the pit lane, and that's the reason I suspect that the penalty was uh, administered. Now, Christian Engelhardt, who'd been running strongly in third place and has just taken effectively second place away from Hubert Hart, uh, will have to drive through, and that will be huge disappointment to the Grasser Racing Team. Indeed so. Over the timing line then. The Lamborghini runs second on the road, but will drop places. So this now gives number one Audi a chance, doesn't it? Because not only is Riveras gaining onto the tail here, look, of Hubert Haupt, but they're going to gain another place when that Lamborghini serves the drive through penalty. And they need to get it out of the way quickly, don't they? Yeah, I mean, they're going to have to take it to the earliest possible opportunity. And, I mean, it just has destroyed the race. And, I mean, the drivers have performed flawlessly. There was a small error in the pit lane and mechanic trip, slip, tumbled, whatever, but because it was on the on the actual pit lane, not behind on the other side of the white line, therefore I suspect that's the reason why they've been penalised. It's a tough penalty it is. for something which was not, I mean, in those difficult pit lane conditions, but those are the rules and the regulations, and if you make exceptions, then you create precedence, and then it all starts. Up the inside, Riveras gets cleanly down the inside, and the Mercedes just really steps aside, and that's Alex Riveras in the number one Audi move through. He will have no doubt been advised by radio that the 63 Lamborghini will have to take a drive through penalty, so don't get too exercised about trying to get to the tail of it too quickly. Mm. Focus now on Michael Meadows, who is, what, 13 or so seconds. No, he's not, there'll be 12 seconds, but he's not ahead of the Mercedes. Maybe 11 seconds by the time he comes up to start, finish line. So 11 seconds and 16 and a half minutes. In these conditions, anything is possible. It is, isn't it? All it takes is one run wide, one slide. He could be in a very different complexion as the cars now accelerate on lap 20, with Christian Engelhardt running second on the road, but it's a phony second place because of this penalty that he's going to have to serve. Michael Meadows goes through, he's in the traffic now as well. He's just put a lap on the 21 Pro-Am Audi. Into the pits comes Engelhardt, so he will drive through. Now we need to see where he drops to. Yeah, but he needs to slow down to 50 kilometers per hour. There was the line, the pit lane entry speed limit line. 
and it's interminable. It's quite a long pit lane, believe me. I have to walk up and down it <laughs> between every session, and uh, it takes a lot longer for me than it'll take for Christian Engelhardt in his Lamborghini. And the reason for the infringement is to confirm a mechanic and wheel still in the working lane when the car moved. It was the same problem WRT had at the Nürburgring last year, so it's because a mechanic and the wheel were in the uh, working lane when the car exited the pit lane. Yeah, I mean, the, the stumble only made that all the more worse. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, whoever was releasing this car... Oh, oh. The, uh, I was on Lambert Ferrari, lead the Pro-Am category, beached. That's Pinibir on Bacti. He was about to be given the black and white flag for track limits while he's explored more track limits. This is how he got here. Let's have a look. Was there any contact? That's Neil Stevenart up the inside. Boom, gets into the side of him. But it's at the end of the straight, isn't it, where Pinibir on Bacti gets it all wrong. And we are going to a full course yellow, incidentally, as there, off slides the Ferrari. Yeah, back locks up, and uh, or maybe used an aggressive downshift, I'm not quite sure which of the two it could have been, but we've now got a full course yellow with 15 minutes of this race remaining, so all that hard work done by Raffaele Marcello and others in the leading pack, that's all going to evaporate there, is the lead Mercedes, full course yellow, everybody's going to have to cruise around at a mandatory 50 kilometres, 80 kilometres per hour behind this, so... Shouldn't evaporate entirely, should it? Because we're not getting safety no, car no, yet. Said, it, yet. But they, normally what they do is full course yellow to get it all into control, yeah. and then if they decide that they want to have a safety car, then the cars can then close up. Agreed, yes. But which is always very disappointing, as we see. Now, it's it's that tire, one, one of the... Uh, Satsalog, isn't it? Yeah. So full course yellow, uh, yeah, d d John makes the point quite validly that often a full course yellow is called for, everybody slows right down, and then when everybody is at a slow pace, you can deploy the safety car. Uh, the reason for a safety car is that then you've got everybody in a line, which means that once the pack has gone through, you've got quite a lot of spare time for the marshals to go trackside and work uh, to retrieve a car. Is that tyre possibly for 26 after the brush with the Ferrari at Santa Lock, I wonder? Don't know. Anyway, the Santa Lock team is waiting for one of their two cars. There is the Ferrari. Unable to get back onto the track, Pity Pirabakti couldn't get any traction, and the gravel traps are likewise very wet. But ordinarily, a gravel trap, when it's wet, gets compacted, and that actually ought to give you a little bit more traction. But in this case, uh, and I think Pity Pirabakti is still sitting behind the wheel as he is removed from that is the entry into turn six. Safety, safety car, car. Yeah. yeah, we do go safety car. Now that does back up your point that all that hard work done by Raffaele Marchiello will disappear, and so a 17 second cushion goes to nothing. And so Alex Riveras now is in the power seat. That's motor racing, folks. It's true. So, safety car procedure, and Michael Meadows' heart sinks. Is there any traffic between him and Alex Riveras that might just give him a little bit of breathing space? Let's see as the cars go down the hill. You can see, look at the lead. Yes, yes there is. There's there a, is. At least one back marker. Yeah, but I mean, that will give him some consolation to know that when the track once again will go green when the Ferrari has been removed or dropped off the recovery vehicle, it might be able to get back onto the racetrack. I don't know whether they will allow that to take place. But in the meantime, let's get an eye. So we've got one idea, one of the... the Further out through the field between leader and second place. Still waiting to see what is next behind. Not sure which, part, which idea that is. There we are on board with the 88. There we can see the Ferrari in the foreground of that picture. Well, the background would be in reality. It's now been about to be dropped off from the recovery vehicle. 55, Peter Scott Horst and Pierre Kaffer's Audi under investigation for its pit stop. Race order, Michael Meadows for Mercedes leads in 88. Number one, Alex Riveras with the Audi second. Third, Mercedes, number six, Hubert Haupt. Fourth, 25, Audi, Simon Gachet. Fifth, 66, Audi, Stein Scott Horst. Sixth, Audi, 17, Stuart Leonard. Seventh, Lamborghini, 82, Loris Hesemans. Eighth, Audi, number two, Dries Van Thor. Ninth, Lamborghini, after its uh, drive-through, this brings them back, not completely into the game, but it gives them a chance, 63, there is 26, Marcus Winkelhock, Neil Stevenart in for that tyre that we were looking at uh, a little earlier, potentially, at Santelot 10th uh, is now number 3 which is Adrian Delina's Audi and remember this was the car that brushed against the Pitti Beron Bacchetti Ferrari, and so a punctured tyre is changed and having trouble getting the gun to sit cleanly on, the nut to get and everybody then rushes back to get over there 
white line to ensure that when the car rolls there was no infringement, which is the, the cause we saw a little bit earlier with the Lamborghini 63. So the one, there's just one car between the lead car and second place car. Alex Rivaras was saying to you pre-race that this uh, weather change does give perhaps more possibility of things to happen on strategy and on luck to a degree as well. And he is making sure his tyres are nice and cool, moving to the very wet part of the road as he comes over the line. Well, the other thing that Alex Rivera sort of, tried, sort of tried, tried to sidestep is the fact that all Audis here this weekend are carrying a bigger weight uh, ballast than they had done one year ago. And on a track like the Hungaro Ring, which is principally a start-stop racetrack, that puts a bigger, uh, not a load as such, but makes you slightly less competitive because you've got to slow all that extra weight down and you've got to re-accelerate it all up again. So carrying an additional ballast is something that in dry conditions, you could definitely say hurts. In these conditions, not quite so much. Safety car in at the end of this lap and in Pro-Am, having lost Pitti Beer on Bacchetti, 26 had inherited the lead and has just pitted. That now should put number 21 uh, which is the Jeko and Christian Malcherek Audi Sport Slovakia car into the lead of Pro-Am. Now that's the one that's sitting between the top two in the race and the question is being asked as to whether that's going to be allowed to unlap itself. You can do it in Formula 1, can you do it in Blanc Pan? But for the moment there's no suggestion it's going to be allowed by. It does look the safety car coming in at the end of this lap that that is going to be. The Ferrari is back running by the way, just we picked it up coming through turn five, so Pitti Pierre Bacti has got back onto the racetrack and slotted himself into the middle uh, of the group of cars. So there's the Pro-Am leader, the Maltreks. It is Jerko Maltrek at the wheel of the car. Now, incidentally, 55, which is now Peter Scott horse, that's going to be given a drive-through for exactly the same offence as the Lamborghini. In other words, somebody being in the working lane when the car left the pit road. Yeah, it's, it's so important these days that that whole choreography in the pit stop is adhered to. You better to wait a second than try and gain yep. a second. Absolutely, because a drive-through here is a very costly problem. Right, we are going to have about, what, seven minutes of racing, give or take? Maybe just over eight as they get towards the timing line, but they're wriggling their way now down to the bottom of the hill and uh, into the stadium section, effectively. And Michael Meadows leads the race. Is he going to be a race winner? Let's find out. We are set to go racing then here at the Hungara Ring. Number 21 Audi will be getting out of the way, no doubt, of the sister car with the green flags fly. We're back racing here at the Hungara Ring. Race two of the weekend in the Blancpain GT Series Sprint Cup. There is an inordinate amount of pressure on Michael Meadows now. Got to put a wheel wrong. Alex Rivera is going after him. Third in the blue Mercedes is Hubert Howe. The leader goes by. The Grumpton Go Mercedes leads by just over a second. A 17 second margin becomes 1.2 as we go racing down then side by side for second look. On the outside line is Hubert Howe trying to get back ahead of Riveras on the inside line. There is Simon Gachet in the white Audi, but look at this, Hubert Howe is on his toes. He's going to go back ahead of the Audi, he's on the inside line as they come down towards turn two. And Hubert Howe does make the move and he goes through, but he's going to go deep into the corner. Howe goes off the circuit. Loses second position, and can he get back up the inside at turn three? The answer is he tries, but no, Alex Riveras comes out ahead. So Meadows leads, he's just extended that by a length or two while they were squabbling behind him on the restart. Riveras runs second, third is Hubert Haupt, and then fourth it is Simon Gachet as the cars accelerate away then down towards turn five on this restart lap. Scott Horst is fifth, sixth is Leonard, look at this, they're still side by side, this is the third now. Gachet right round the outside, brilliant move found all the grip up the curve and he goes third. Simon Gachet has got better and better and better as the season has gone on and that was a great move. Through he has gone up into third place and the way that he's charging now suggests he may not be done yet. Look lower down, Stuart Leonard, number 17, coming back at Steins Cock Horse. He's on the inside line. Hubert Haupt is all sideways ahead of them in the blue Mercedes. But he hands on to the place. Behind him is Scott Horse, who fans off Stuart Leonard as they come into view. And then, seventh is Hazemann. Eighth is Van Tour in the Audi. Brilliant racing. Shows what a safety car can do, and it shows what wet conditions can do as well. Hubert Haupt now becomes the cork in the Audi bottle because he's got one, two, three stacked up behind him, but he goes deep into 12 and past him. Now goes Scott Horst, and here comes Stuart Leonard up on the inside. There's more rain on the way, we understand. Well, they're on wax, but it's going to get treacherous, and as Leonard goes wide, there is Vantor, number two. He's got ahead, look, of Hubert Haupt, who's dropping like a stone now as they come up towards turn 14. 
Hubert Hout on this restart lap just cannot get the power down, can he? The car just doesn't even have any go. He's struggling for grip, struggling for drive. Meadows to Riveras, the gap's down. It's eight tenths of a second with six minutes to go. Down they come towards turn one. Simon Gachet is third. He is doing a ripper job in these conditions, Simon Gachet, relative newcomer to GT racing. In fourth over the line, it was Steins Glockholz. In fifth place, now it's Stuart Leonard. Up into sixth is Dries Van Thorn. Down to seventh has gone Hout. Down to eighth has gone Hesemans. Ninth over the line, Engelhardt in the uh, orange and green Lamborghini. You can see in the background as there, Loris Hesemans goes round the outside of Hubert Hout. That's brave as they almost toboggan their way down the hill. And he's done it. Really impressive, that right round the outside. That's the story of the weekend, the rain at the Hungara ring. The other story is who is going to win race two, and we do not yet know because it's a gap coming down between the leaders and Simon Gachet driving the race of his GT live. He's getting closer all the time. Stuart Leonard was way out wide up the curb. Christian Engelhardt closing there onto the tail of the Hubert Hout driven Mercedes as they come out of turn five now. Heavy rain on track, we're being warned about. Oddly, it's not that heavy over on the start line. It is starting to rain over here, but it's worse on the back part of the circuit. And that actually seems to be all weekend the direction from where the weather comes. Five minutes to go. The rain is falling once more. What else does this race, this weekend of drama at the Hungara Ring have in store? Michael Meadows leads the way. He cannot wait for that checkered flag to come. There's a big, big wobble there as Rivera's out over the kerb. Marcus Winkelhock, Christopher House, a look on in the Santalot garage, keeping dry. The leaders now tiptoeing their way down through turn 12. It is this Mercedes all of a sudden fighting against a flotilla of Audis creeping up behind. And that is Vladimir Abdoev, who's had a spin. He was 14, number 35, the SMP racing with Aka ASP Mercedes. Gachet coming up on the back of Rivera. So this could be Michael Meadows' salvation in this. Simon Gachet closing up onto the tail of number one Audi. The gap was coming down into turn 14. So. Four minutes to go. Michael Meadows leads by one second from Alex Rivera. Third is Gachet. In fourth place, Stein Scotthorst. Then Stuart Leonard under attack from Dries Van Thor as they come almost together down towards turn one. Rivera goes wide. And Simon Gachet doing pretty much what Christopher Hassel was doing earlier on. There is Christopher watching it all. And Simon Gachet doing a very impressive job here. He's hunting down that car ahead of him. Remember, he's the championship leader just up the road ahead. But... Simon Gachet, who has uh, raced for a season in Blanc Pan GT racing, he's come out of LMP3 and Formula Renault, Formula 4 single seaters prior to that, but now very, very impressive in this second stint. You can see the way that he's going, and it's nearly encouraging as well to see the way that Santelot continues to grow as a team. Winner of the Spa 24 hours last year, but a serious force now compared to WRT in GT racing. The leading line still not resolved in terms of who will finish where as Stuart Leonard goes way wide over the curve this time. Michael Meadows is being caught by Alex Rivera. Rivera is taking Simon Gachet with him. Three more minutes to go. Michael Meadows trying to push as hard as he dares, but conscious that the grip level is changing all the time and there's pressure from behind him. Uh, Michael, don't think for one moment, is a dummy behind the wheel of a race car. Came from Formula BMW into Formula 3 Class B, the national class in the British Championship. Raced for a time in British GT and Ferraris. He was a double Carrera Cup GB champion. Then he moved into Blanc Pan GT racing. And Michael Meadows, always a pace setter, always a front runner, very, very quick British driver. And for the moment, fending off just the Riveras and Gachet fight. Second and third places. And at certain parts, look, he's able to pull away. Certainly when Riveras has to start defending ever more vigorously from the white and blue Audi that is right on the tail of the number one car as they sprint up the hill now. To turn 14, we're going to get two more laps out of this, looking at the clock. The last lap through is a two minutes one, two minutes and 14 on the clock as over the line goes the leading car. Michael Meadows looks as though he might, might, might be able to hang on in there. 1.3 seconds is the advantage. We have not yet had a Sprint Cup win from Mercedes this season. This could be the day. And Simon Gachet is still fighting to get past Alex Riveras. They blast down the hill now. Further down the order, up into ninth has come Nico Jamin. Hubert Hout, after this safety car period, has just fallen away. He's down to 10th. Number one, Audi tries to find the grip on the outside line. Alex Riveras, the championship leader with Christopher Meese, running second in the race and trying to keep at bay Simon Gachet. They climb the hill. A minute and a half to go. This lap and one more. Stuart Leonard running fifth. He's on his last warning for track limits. There he is, way wide again at four. 
Stuart Leonard is under attack and that's Riveras going very wide and losing second place. Simon Gachet goes through to the delight of Santalop. So now Simon Gachet goes through. What can he do about Michael Meadows? He's all sideways and so too. Right there behind him, Riveras cuts the chicane, gets all over the curb as he tries to get up the inside. Christopher House are looking ever more nervous. There's one more lap to go at the end of this. Everybody being warned about track limits, including the leader, Michael Meadows, at the chicane. So there he is, trying to maintain the advantage. It's 1.3 seconds in these ghastly conditions that are changing almost lap by lap now. Sometimes it's easy, but right now, the rain is starting to fall a little bit more on the back part of the circuit. It's not too bad here, coming into the stadium. But with the last lap starting, this is how Riveras made that mistake. Look, he just went a little bit deep into turn five. Yes, there's the grit, but he was going too quickly. Couldn't get the car slowed down, and that was enough to give Gachet second place. Here we come to start the last lap of the race here in Hungary. Michael Meadows ahead of Simon Gachet, who's way out wide. Look, and this might give Riveras the chance to fight back. All of these inter-Nissan Audi squabbles are giving Meadows the chance to get away. Fourth coming over the timing line now. It is 66 Steins Gorkholst who is ahead of Dries Van Tool. Stuart Leonard is down to sixth. So Michael Meadows leads the way for Mercedes. And then there's an Audi showroom stacked up behind him. There is, of course, the one make Audi R8 Cup. Well, it's like a round of it here. Second, third, fourth, and fifth, and sixth, all Audi R8s. Then you've got Hesemann, seventh for Lamborghini, eighth, Engelhardt for Lamborghini, ninth, the next Mercedes, Nico Jamin, and tenth, now Nico Bastian's Mercedes. Michael Meadows, if he can hang on in there for another, what, two-thirds of a lap, will get a great reception. It's an overdue win, but he's not there yet. Christopher Hasser is still pretty nervous about what's going on for second place. The car is 1.9 seconds away from the leader. I don't think he's going to catch Michael Meadows unless Double M makes a mistake, but Simon Gachet has driven brilliantly in this stint. Riveras now is under attack from Stein Scott Horse. They turn their way up towards the chicane. Into the chicane they come, and there, Raffaele Marchiello and Michael Meadows' Mercedes leads the way. So as they wriggle their way now through turns eight and nine, we're almost at the end of what has been a drama-filled race, and still there are battles raging on, because 66 Steins Cockles now comes up onto the back of number one, Alex Rivera. Now, can the championship leading car lose another place before the end? There is Raffaele Marchiello watching on. Now, don't forget that he and Michael Meadows are second in the championship, so the more they can outscore number one Audi by, the better. Scott Horse right on the tail of Rivera. Then look, Dries Van Tor up into fifth. He's had a brilliant stint as well after Will Stevens struggled early on. Stuart Leonard is there, and there's contact, and that is Van Tor going around. Dries Van Tor, a corner or two from home, spins, loses a place to Hesemans, loses a place to Engelhardt. That's going to put him eight. Michael Meadows and Raffaele Marcello are going to win a tremendous race here at the Hungara Ring. What a difference the weather can make as the Mercedes wins for Michael Meadows and Raffaele Marcello. Simon Gachet second with Christopher Hasse. Stein Scotthorst is third in the car that he shares with Calvin van der Linde. Fourth, Rivera and Mies. Fifth, Leonard and Fritz. Sixth, Hesemans and Pereira. Seventh, Engelhardt and Bortolotti. Eighth, Van Tour and Stevens. Ninth, Jamin and Bolotov. And tenth, Bastian and Manchester in a car that was 21st when Jack Manchester pitted. What a race. Raffaele Marciello along with Michael Meadows, the winner. And here uh, is Pro-Am, but 26 Neil Stevenart actually has stayed ahead. So the Audi is going to be second there because it lost the lap under the safety car. So Yoko Malcherek fends off Pity Beer on Bakhti. There's a lap between them, but it's number 26 Audi still to take the flag that is going to win in Pro-Am. And there, Michael Meadows will celebrate. That win, he will feel, has been a long time coming, but he really does deserve that. That was a great drive. Uh, Raffaele Marchiello set it up nicely for him with his superb opening stint, but Michael Meadows had to cope with the pressure, the traffic, the change of conditions, and the fact as well that he had that safety car situation to control as well. But Michael Meadows has done it. A great job done by both him uh, and also by Raffaele Marchiello in that first stint. So the Acker ASP Mercedes is victorious. An incident between uh, Stuart Leonard and Dries Van Thor is under investigation. That was the WRT teammates getting involved at the penultimate corner. Things like that tend not to go down very well in the WRT camp of Vincent Vos and Thierry Tassin. So there'll be a bit of explaining to do post-race, but 
as the Santa Lock car of Neil Stevenoff has just crossed the line to secure honours in Pro Am. An awful lot of drama to reflect on post race. John Watson will be down in Park Fairbay ready to have a word with the winners. But yesterday, Nico Bastian, after the first part of qualifying, said how important pole position was here because he just can't overtake. Well, if you bring some rain into the equation, anything can happen. And perhaps inevitably, now that the race has finished, so the conditions are brightening up. Michael Meadows and Raffaele Marchiello victorious in this eighth race within the Blancpain GT Series Sprint Cup. The first sprint win of the season for uh, Raffaele and for Michael and the first for a Mercedes as well. Second place going the way of uh, Simon Gachet and Christopher Hasser. That is their best of the year. They've had a third at Masano in fairness, but that's the best yet. And then Stein, Scott Horst and uh, Kelvin van der Linde, winners at Zolder taking third place. Michael Meadows will be elated with that. As I say, it's been a long time coming, which isn't to make any judgment on Michael's performances this year, but it's just such a competitive championship uh, that uh, that will mean a lot to him. There is Raffaele Marciello walking down the pit lane as Michael Meadows is about to open the door and he doesn't jump out of the car. It's more relief and He's a bit drained, I should think, after all of that. But Michael Meadows, well done. That was some drive to withstand all the pressure. And the British driver, victorious. Of course, Will Stevens, another winning Brit this year. But Michael Meadows, helmet off, victorious, and takes out the earplugs to talk to the team. And there's a happy smile from the British driver. Job well done. Raffaele Marciello comes across to say well done, complimenti, and the uh, Pirelli winner's hat for both of them. Michael Meadows and Raffaele Marciello face the cameras, and very shortly they will face John Watson's questions as well. Winners here of race two at the Hungara Ring, and uh, a great drive put in by Simon Gasho, I have to say, for second place there. Uh, Stein, Scott Horst and uh, Kelvin van der Linde taking third in the Atento Audi, Akinaka's team. But Michael Meadows has done it. He and Raffaele Marchiello win at the Hungara Ring. They are with John Watson. Raffaele, outstanding job by you and Michael today. Yeah, it was uh, like really important to win, I think. We never won this year and we were like, you know, fighting for the championship. So I think yeah, it was important to show everyone that we can win. And I mean, uh, the car was fantastic. I did a good job. Michael did a perfect job in the restart. So I'm really happy. Having a clear road ahead of you made a difference? Yeah, I mean, the car was good. So I was able to push. I like the rain. So I mean, it was a perfect day. You like pass to two, I hear. Michael, you got the car with a comfortable lead, then this full Corsello and safety car. Did your heart sink? Well, a bit, yeah, because I was just pacing myself and looking after the tyres in case it rained harder. And then obviously the safety car undid that. And I didn't know where my limits, so I'd just been cruising, so the first couple of corners were a bit difficult, but I just tried to, you know, not make any mistakes, really, as long as I touched every apex, and it was going to be difficult for them to pass. The car was great. I knew it was good because Lelo, you know, proved what it can do. The team did a great job leaving out till the end, so... Well, I'm really happy. Now, it's been a long time coming this year. We've, we've always been there or thereabouts, but sealing it in the rain is, is tricky, but it's good fun. Looked like you could drive the car pretty much anywhere on the circuit. Yeah, it was. Yeah, the car was really good. You know, some, I could take some dry lines somewhere, some wet lines, look after the tyres. I never felt too stressed. So, um, you know, I, I knew from watching Lelo the car was good, so I didn't have to stress too much. Good job. And... The story continues post-race lower down. Number 17, Stuart Leonard, given a 30-second uh, penalty. It was a drive-through, but of course, applied post-race, it is made into a 30-second penalty for causing that collision in turn 13. So Stuart Leonard drops from what was fifth uh, down to 16th place, a long, long way down the order. So Stuart Leonard's drive-through penalty, uh, a costly one, or the equivalent of the drive-through penalty, that uh, 30 seconds drops him down the order. Right, two delighted Mercedes drivers. Let's hear the thoughts about the Simon Gachet in particular. Did a great job for second place. Christopher, you had a busy afternoon out there on your stint. Yeah, that's true. Uh, it was actually very difficult track conditions. Um, was with quite a lot of aquaplaning. Uh, but we managed um, to get further to the front during that stint. And then we had in the pit stop, yeah, we had a little bit of issue with, uh, yeah, we had to let some cars passing us, which cost us a bit of time. But Simon did at the end a fantastic stint and he just catched P2. So, yeah, good job from him. Tell us about the Christopher show. You and Christopher Meese were at it hammer on tongs. 
Yeah, we met us a couple of times in some corners, but I have to say it was uh, good racing, fair racing, and uh, yeah. We made it. Same on uh, tough, tough conditions. I mean, what were you having to think about when you were trying to make your way up onto the podium? Yeah, uh, Christopher did an amazing uh, job during all the weekend. He pushed me, uh, he pushed me on the limits. So it's amazing to finish P2. I'm a rookie. It's, uh, it's my, uh, it's my brother of the car. So thank you, Christopher. Thank you, Audi. Thank you, Santaloc, for the amazing job this weekend. He's a good teacher, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> thank you, man. Well done, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Great job by Simon Gachet, and it's fascinating, isn't it, to see how young drivers develop like this, partly seat time, but also you put it with a factory gun like Christopher Hasser, and of course they will go through the data together, of course there will be advice and there will be guidance, and uh, Simon Gachet still developing. Uh, of course, talk about that battle between the Christophers, they were teammates, co-drivers, in the very early days when they were at WRT together. And let's hear from the third-placed team, Stan Scott Horse and Calvin van der Linde. Kelvin, another great ride from the 66 Audi. Yeah, um, obviously a great day for us. We, we overcame adversity a little bit after the disaster from yesterday. Um, starting P50, nobody could have expected that one, but uh, it was super fun in the rain, uh, where it was all the equalizers for all the manufacturers. It was pretty much down to the drivers to really fight it out and uh, had some really cool battles out there. But you're the tougher of the conditions. Did it get any easier for you? <laughs> well, to be fair, Kelvin did the hard job, I guess, because he had to survive the first couple of laps. He did most of the overtaking, so he brought the car home perfectly well. I think it was position seven, seven or six. Uh, we lost to the number 17 in the pit stop again, but after a few laps, I could get the, get the position back. And then uh, with the safety car, everything bunching up, I could manage to get up to four. And then in the last lap, last corner, I just managed to squeeze in for third. Talk about that squeeze through again, please. So um, it's actually quite funny because Kelvin on the radio said to me, try the inside in the last couple of corners because it's more grippy. So I saw Alex defending the inside, so he had to wash out a little bit. And at that time, I just dived up the inside where it was more grippy. And then uh, then I could just drive cleanly through to the finish. I didn't realize you're a driver or coach as well as a race driver. Let's start the podium ceremony with the pit stop challenge. I did. You're a driver, you're a driver coach as well. Race results here at the Hungaroring. It is a win for the Anka ASP team of Michael Meadows and Raphael Marciello from second place, Simon Gachet and Christopher Hasser. And third going to Stein Scott Horst and Kelvin van der Linde. Alex Riberas fourth, along with Christopher Meese. Fifth, Loris Hesemans and Frank Pereira, ahead of Christian Engelhardt and Mirko Bortolotti, despite the drive through. Despite a spin, seventh, Dries Van Tour and Will Stevens through Nico Germain and Dennis Bulatov. Nico Bastian and Jack Manchester ninth, with Adrian Delina and Ricardo Feller rounding out the top ten. The story post-race, though, is that drive-through converted to 30 seconds time penalty for Stuart Leonard and Robin Frins, dropping that car to 16th place after contact with its sister number two entry into turn 13. And a pro-am win for Neil Stevenart and Marcus Winkelhock, a lap up on Yeko and Christian Malcherek. As far as the sprint part of the championship is concerned, how about this? Raffaele Marciello, Michael Meadows, Alex Riveras, Christopher Meese now tied on 74 points. So with one more sprint round to go, uh, they are tied on points and we are set for a thrilling finish to the championship. Mirko Portolotti and Christian Engelhardt next in the standings with Kelvin van der Linde and Stein Scott Horst just two and a half up on Dries Van Thor and Will Stevens. The Sprint Cup at Budapest this weekend has certainly given plenty of drama and it has teed us up nicely for the very end of the championship season. So let's have a look at the highlights. The road drier now than it was at the start when they were released from behind the safety car to go racing and track conditions were starting to improve but even so it was treacherous out there and the early good battle was between the two Christophers, Mies ahead of Hassa as they ran together. They battled their way through the first into the race, Christopher Hasser eventually gaining ground, but Marcus Winkelhock was tapped into a spin, he rotated, and around he went. This was the battle, it raged on between the two Christophers, Hasser eventually getting through on the inside, and that was to the frustration of Vincent Voss on the pit wall. Contact also between Calderelli and Bulatov, and Drag Calderelli got a drive through for the contact. The pit window opened, in came Robin Frintz to give way to Stuart Leonard 
And as the cars poured their way back onto the circuit, the 25 Santa Lock car had lost ground in the pits, but a 63 rejoined with the mechanics still in the working lane. It copped a drive through penalty. Raffaele Marchiello gave way to Michael Meadows, but the number 63 Lambo was soon to drop down the field. Contact between the eventual Pro-Am winning Audi of Neil Stevenart and Pitti Birombatti meant that Birombatti ended up in the gravel at the next corner. He was delayed by the safety car getting him out of the gravel, but also, of course, the Audi had to pit for a new tyre. It was punctured after the contact. Safety car punctured up the field. We went racing, and Hubert Hout fell away. He lost traction. He lost place after place. And having run so strongly second, the car never seemed to get the tyres back up to temperature or pressure or grip or whatever it was, and he fell down to 12th place. Lucas Stolz having looked on in dismay from the pit garage. Then Alex Riveras made his mistake and ran out wide, giving Simon Gachet third place. But we weren't done yet. Contact at turn 13 turned the number two Audi around for his Vantor spinning off. The contact from Stuart Leonard. The chequered flag flew to give Michael Meadows and Raffaele Marchiello their first win in the Sprint Cup this year and their first win for Mercedes in the championship in the Sprint Cup this season. So great action here at the Hungara Ring and well done Michael Meadows and Raffaele Marchiello victorious here in this second race of the weekend from John Watson and David Addison. Bye bye. We have the podium ceremonies underway and then the overall podium, which is going to be for the third place driver, starts Cockhorst and Kelvin van der Linde. Second, a delighted Christopher Hasser and Simon Gachet. Christopher then leaps onto the podium for second place. So it's a Tempto, then Santa Lock. But the winning team is Aka ASP. Jero Polygon's team represented by the winning drivers there, Michael Meadows and Raffaele Macciello. So for Aka ASP, Jérôme Polycon squad, Jérôme on the podium, we have the French national anthem. It is a French team and now the trophies are brought forward. There for the third place duo, Linda Yaro, the Hungara Ring Sports PLC Sales and Events Director hands over the trophy to Stein Scottros and to Kelvin van der Linda. Then for second place, the trophies go to Christopher Hasser and Simon Gachet. And race winners Michael Meadows and Raffaele Marchiello on the top step as Jerome Polycon gets the team's trophy. And there to Michael and to Raffaele, the winners' trophies. And they have worked oh so hard for those, not just here, but this season. We know the, the point has been well made about it being an overdue win, but it's been a long time coming, but it's a very well deserved one. Well done, Michael Meadows, well done. Uh, to Raffaele Marchiello and now uh, Patricia Kiefer, the Chief Operating Officer of SRO Motorsports Group, steps forward to hand over the checks that are to the season-long entrance to those teams that do both endurance and sprint. And twelve and a half thousand euros to the winners, ten thousand to the second placed squad, and seven and a half thousand euros to Attempto Racing's third placed drivers. Trophies now to be held and photographs taken. All smiles on the top step of the podium. Very, very well done to Michael Meadows and Raffaele Marchiello. The champagne is sprayed and the celebrations here are underway. We still, of course, have the Silver Cup podium and we will have to the 
uh, Pro-Am podium, but let's just remind ourselves of the race result. Michael Meadows and Raphael Marchiello being the winners from Simon Gachet and Christopher Hauser in second place and third, Attempto's Audi, Stan Scott Horse and Kelvin van der Linde. So despite all the effort the WRT put in and having so many cars, four of its best, Alex Riberas and Christopher Meese ahead of Loris Hesemans and Font Pereira. Christian Engelhardt sixth with Mirko Portolotti, then Dries Van Will Stevens seventh despite that spin at the penultimate corner and uh, Nico Germain and Denis Bulatov coming home in eighth place. The Lexus didn't really shine in that race, sadly. 13th and 14th, Clean and Costa, Seedler and Paltola. Andrew Watson's BMW ending up 15th, but the time penalty putting Stuart Leonard and Robin Prince down to that 16th spot. And so, finally, life is looking a bit brighter over the Hungara ring. As far as the Pro-Am Championship is concerned, Pity Beer on Bacchetti and Carlo Van Dam still lead, but Marcus Finkerhock and Neil Stevenart are getting closer. And good to see the Maltorex here this weekend. They are now third ahead of Michael Bronizeski. So there, Carlo Van Dam and Pity Biron Bakhti go for third on the Pro Am podium. Second to Yerko and Christian Maltorek. And the Pro Am winners, Neil Stevenart and Marcus Winkelhock. They will make their way forward to add to the celebrations at Santa Lock. Second overall and a class win. But there, Marcus Winkelhock, a bit like Christopher Hauser is doing uh, with Simon Gachet, helping Neil Stevenart, bringing him on and adding to his experience and his ability round by round. Santa Lot Racing then, the French team, P1 in Pro-Am, Marcus Winkelhock and Niels Stevenart. Niels, who's come from the 24-hour uh, series, V to V, he's moved up from GT4 Racing. And the trophies to be presented there for the uh, third place, Pity Veron Bakhti. Not exactly all smiles after that uh, incident that put him off into the gravel. Uh, it wasn't the touch that put him there because it was a mistake at the next corner, but he might feel that the slightly forceful way that the place had changed went against him. It was Neil Stevenart that came through. Second place trophies to the visiting Audi Sports Slovakia squad, father and son of Christian and uh, Jeko Malcherek. But Santa Lock takes the team's trophy and it will be Marcus Winkelhock in the blue and white overalls and Neil Stevenart in the red and white that take the trophies as Pro-Am winners here in Budapest. Marcus Winkelhock and Neil Stevenart win Pro-Am here at the Hungara Ring. And Patricia Kiefer is there with the checks to be presented. So seven and a half thousand pound uh, euros, I should say, to the third place. If you're wondering why the Maltrex don't get, it's because they're not season-long entrants. Uh, so this is for the teams that are doing the whole season across both championships. Uh, and the trophy's held aloft for the photographs from the drivers at the end of another all-action race. And how the weather conditions in Hungary can liven up 60 minutes of GT racing. It's always going to be interesting. But in the end, it has been very dramatic indeed. The champagne is there, but nobody feels particularly disposed to spraying it. And in a moment, we should get the drivers up to the podium uh, for the Silver Cup, won by Nico Jamal and Denis Bulatov from Nico Bastian and Jack Manchester. And third, going the way of Adrian Delina, who's been a very welcome addition to the Blanc Pan ranks this year, and uh, Ricardo Feller, his co-driver. There you see turn one, which has been the scene of perhaps more drama yesterday in the drive than in the wet today. People being a lot more cautious there. It's always a place you can overtake, but of course if you run out wide, you suddenly start to lose uh, momentum. And this is how the Silver Cup finished in the race. Nico Jamman and Dennis Bulatov, despite the spin, the winners. Nico Bastian hauling the Manchester's car up the order for second. And Adrian Delina and Ricardo Feller third with Hubert Hout and uh, Luca Stoltz taking fourth in class, dropping away towards the end ahead of Andrew Watson and uh, Lucas Moraes in the BMW. And so there, Ricardo Feller and Adrian Delina make their way on to the podium. That's another of the WRT round Audis. Jack Manchester and Nico Bastian take second in Silver Cup. And it's going to be a race class win 
for the Aka ASP car, which means that Jérôme Ponicon is back on the podium to attract more silverware. And there is Nico Jamin, along with Denis Bulatov, category winners in the Silver Cup in the Blancpain GT Series Sprint Cup Race 2 here in Hungary. Dennis Bulatov and Nico Jamin, Les Pilotes for Aka ASP Autosport Promotion, the French team. There is the French national anthem. The trophies now in reverse order. Third, second, team winners. And for the third place crew of Ricardo Feller and Adrian Delina, the trophies are handed over. Then to Jack Manchester, the ever improving young Brit, and uh, Nico Bastian, who has looked very impressive this season in Blancpain, both in Europe and in Asia. He's been a race winner in the Asian series with Rafael Marchiello. He takes his second place trophy. Jerome Polycon in this class gets a 1 2, of course, because the Aka ASP car coming home second of Manchester and Bastian behind the winners. Nico Jamin and Denis Bulatov with the SMP red, white and blue colours on his overalls. Silver Cup won in Hungary by Denis Bulatov and Nico Jamin. There is the Pirelli award as well. Two sets of tyres go to Aka ASP's Denis Bulatov and Nico Jamin as the winners of the Silver Cup. And then there are the Czechs as well. Patricia Kiefer arrives with the third placed 7,500, sorry, 1,500 euros uh, for the Silver Cup. Third of uh, Ricardo Feller and Adrian Delina. 3,000 euros to the second placed Jack Manchester and Nico Bastien. And it's 6,000 euros for the Silver Cup winners. And of course, a kiss for Jérôme Polycon as well. The final podium then completed here at the Hungara Ring. And although plenty of Audis have had their say in the outcome of the race, Ultimately, it's been hard to keep Mercedes drivers off the podium, certainly in this race. Michael Meadows and Raffaele Marchiello, the victors at the end of a great second race. There's one more Sprint Cup race, and that is going to be at the Nürburgring in three weeks' time. But here in a rather wet Budapest, celebrations can begin for Raffaele Marchiello and Michael Meadows, winners of the Blancpain GT Series Sprint Cup. From John Watson and David Addison, bye-bye.